Okay. Woo! <laughs> we're back. And we're back at it again. It's a new season. Gang, gang. Let's go. <laughs> the seems ready for this one. I'm just hyped, man. It's been it's a long time hyped. since we recorded, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Emmanuel, what's going on? You ready for this one? I'm well, G. Yeah? Good to be back in the city, ready to record with back, you guys. He's from Cape Town, by hey, the way. Emmanuel's Gap's all the way down. from Cape Town. Gap's Emmanuel down. drove, I mean, Katleko drove all the way from Centurion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's like, con- what, countrywide things going on right now. Yeah, we're well, trying to make for it happen. this episode. Man. Yeah, we're trying to make it happen, man. We're trying to make it happen. Of course, in the tradition of our book club, we, we had to... Uh, pair our conversation with a great bottle of wine. He calls it great. It's, it's not <laughs> great. <laughs> I have opinions, reserved opinions. No, but guys, okay, so opinion. here's my motivation. For everybody that's listening, we're reading. You know the book we're reading. We know the book we're reading. They saw the title. They did see the title. We're reading a it's book. It's unfortunate that none of us have a hardcover. Yeah, copy. we don't have a hardcover. Yeah, we, did, yeah. we did online things, New Age, yeah. AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you put the hardcover <laughs> Like no, I, I didn't, didn't buy the hardcover. So yeah. my motiv- my motivation for this bottle was that we're reading probably one of the heaviest books we've ever read on this book club. I have a bone to pick with this club. We're always reading books that are like Pretty just dense. too damn deep. You're the one who picks them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we vote. <laughs> it's a democratic vote. We vote. Yeah. We vote. And, and the, web, the, the our site is dropping, so we're going to yeah, be able to take in be more a data. Lot more data coming yeah. in for sure. For better for book sure. picks and nominations. Yeah. yeah. Excited, we're reading Walter Rudney, uh, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. The book was written. When was the book written, man? You have the date? Sure. You don't have the no, date. No, not the date. I do have the date. Just it was a very long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that we should know. Yeah. As our conversation goes, we'll pull it up. But um, what's unique about this book is that it's it's fundamental. You know when they say a book is canonical? We use this word every episode, but mm. it means that it inspired all the things that came after, after it. it. Mm. So every conversation on this topic, on underdevelopment, even the term coined underdevelopment, every book that came after this was inspired by this book mm. and pull, pulls from this book. Mm. So it's fundamental in that sense. It's definitely a dense, dense, deep book. So we need it. A dense, dense, deep wine. Today we're having a Cabernet Sauvignon, right? Uh, what's Just unique? Ab- yeah, yeah, so they always kill me every episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. It knocks him. Inside joke. So, I mean, uh, what's very unique about this um, uh, grape is that the grape itself is smaller than other species of grape, but the, th- the skin is thick. So that's what gives it its very bittery taste, sour. It's known as a full-bodied wine. And also red wines like this and Merlot, right? Merlot is another type of red wine are known for their aging capacity. So the, this is, when they say age is like fine wine, this is the fine wine that they're talking about. This is by the KWV House. You know, that's very popular on our page. Uh, we've been having that a lot. With that said, Gatli, you can... Uh, sort us out on that regard. Hopefully, mm. sure thing. While we pull up our notes, let's have the conversation. Let's start yes. read. Yeah, let's start talking. Let's start talking, please. Walter Rodney. Yeah, so I wrote a bit here about. I have a lot of notes. That's cool. This that's episode. Good. Please have a lot of notes because I'm like on page 23, so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> what is page 23? Page? It's, it's the page. challenge of some. What? The, the challenge of Africans or something. The, is that the section? The, the, the title. Yeah. First of all, there's three different PDFs or two different PDFs in our, in our... There's different versions of the book, of definitely. The yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. So, guys, the book was written in 1972. Yeah. Has anyone have thoughts about that? In Dar es Salaam, huh? I was in Dar es Salaam. In Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam. Yeah. Or in, is it just Walter Rudner is from there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was published originally in, in by Dar a Salaam. Tanzanian publishing house, yeah. which is an interesting point of conversation as well, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, guys, I was there. I've been to Dar es Salaam. It's a, it's a nice place. I, awesome. You've been there. I've been to Dar es Salaam. Yeah, I was working in Dar es Salaam. Really? Yeah, with Cybert. We've had this conversation. No, no. I've been to Tanzania. <laughs> I told you guys that the only international trip I've ever taken was to What's Tanzania. Tanzania. Dar es Salaam. Yeah, we had this conversation. Cat, I don't God remember. Damn. I've been to Dar es Salaam for real, man. It's a nice place. <laughs> okay. It sounds familiar. It's like like so. How, I guess, what was it like? What was it like in Tanzania? It's hot. It's okay. warm. Like it's human warm. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? Like all the time. Like you wearing a collared shirt, you are bound to sweat. You Still. are bound to sweat. Um, it's no white people. You lie. So I, you didn't see white people. I did, but they were, they looked like they were on the amazing race. <laughs> <laughs> 
They look like they don't belong they there. Look like they look like they wanted to leave. <laughs> just a young pit stop <laughs> and then go to Europe after. This is funny. Okay, okay, and then okay. So hardly any white people. You hardly know why that's people. funny? Why? I heard a fact that Tanzania was kind of the epicenter. Of, of the of, of of the liberation struggles in Africa. Uh, okay, mm. That makes sense. So for the struggles for freedom. They've still got freedom. like proper tribes there. Like people wearing robes and no like outsider outfits, city yeah. things, no Nike shoes. No, they're I'm talking. Like indigenous. They're still indigenous yeah. tribes there in Dar. When I went at least, it was a, a good three, two years yeah. ago. Okay. Here's a, like fun, here's a fun fact, right? Yeah. Today, when we talk about the black consciousness movement, when we talk about people being aware Politically, yeah. socially, spiritually, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of their movements. He, Kathleen, that's good. Though. More than enough. That's all right. <laughs> Let him say. <laughs> More than enough. <laughs> when? He Look, was scared. He was like, yeah. Yeah. Can you guys yeah. say that I'm learning from the previous podcast? <laughs> no, I was Last like, More than enough. I went, you, please I went please for get it. that for us uh, yeah, on sure, the sorry, table. Sorry, yeah. No, it's all right. Uh, I'll put it in my pocket. <laughs> so, 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 conscious people, right? A lot of their movements. Um, apparently, Africa's true name, you'll hear it, especially people that are inspired by people like Steve Biko, they'll say the true name of Africa is, Same yeah, yeah go for it. Mm-hmm. That's enough. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> right, man. I was just like, yeah. I didn't think he was being real. I didn't think he was being real. <laughs> it's funny, I was joking, but... <laughs> so people inspired by, by Steve Biko, they'll refer to the true name of Africa was Azania. And I just found it, you've heard that. Have you ever heard that word? Uh, Azania? Azania, yeah. Guys, come on. Is that Swahili? In Cape Town. I don't know what language that is. Oh, guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's part of the problem that? that we don't know. Yeah, that's part of the problem. No, but you've never heard the word azania? I have no. heard. I have heard. This guys are proper is. cheese boys. Hey, we're going to get flack for this. <laughs> wow. From, from the woke. I have heard. From the woke folk. I knew, guys. I know. Azania. Wow. Azanian People's Liberation Army. <laughs> Thank you. Please educate us. Okay, so so apparently that's the original name of Africa, right? I don't know the full history on it, but I just found it interesting that it phonetically sounds similar to Tanzania. Tanzania, right? And then they say that is the epicenter. And then when you add the, the fact that that's the epicenter of the liberation movements, I was like, damn, mm, there yeah. must be something there. There must be something Where there. they smoke, there's fire, right? Mm. So um, even so, South Africa's liberation is can be... Ca- at least militarily, right? Mm, yeah. When it comes to the armed struggle, there's a few big liberation movements that contributed towards um, our arms fight against the apartheid state. Mm-hmm. Um, so the ANC had a military wing, uh, which was called MK, Mkonto Wesizwe. Mm. That's the mm. military wing of the... You pronounce that like you're Vusite Mkwai. Mkonto Wesizwe. <laughs> you said it actually a little bit like, better. I did, I did. You know, Mkonto Wesizwe. Yeah, yeah. It's Zulu, right? Yeah, yeah, it means yeah. our spear. Yeah. That's yeah. really uh, what it means. So that's the ANC's liberation, the, the radical army, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, that pioneered the armed struggle. But then you have the PAC, which is, I think, the Pan-African Congress. I think that's what that party stands for. Mm-hmm. There was uh, also always. PAC. Yeah, search mm-hmm. it up. Search mm-hmm. what the PAC is. I remember learning the full about, abbreviation. about these Congress parties and dates from Steve Biko's... Uh, I, write I write what I, write. I like. I yeah. just don't have them in my back pocket like 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 that, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, I'm ready. But I know what you're... <laughs> You're I know right. what you're Do you know why? About. Do you know why? 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 Recently, uh, you know where I work, right? Yeah, hey, right, 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 right. So I've been working for military veterans. Mm. Before this, right. I was in the military veteran section. section. Yes, that's correct. Before yes. I moved to human resource yes. development. So yeah. I got to actually interact with these people okay. and the leaders yeah. of these people. All right. And I heard stories, right? Mm. Stories. We'll talk about some of that. Mm. Hopefully, if we get time. By the way, the Azania comes up again. It's Pan Africanist Congress of Azania. Uh, uh uh-huh and then they had a a a military wing called if i'm not mistaken it's uh, wow i'm forgetting Mm. is it apla up a a p l a which will stand for azanian people's liberation army sure apla apla well, he looks that up. So there's uh, Apla, which is another, it's like Mkonto Caesar. It's another liberation arm of a different political party. There's, there's, there's another one too, right? But these are the main, um, these are the main mm. um, military groups that are involved with African liberation. Mm. Why I find that interesting is the word Azania comes up a lot. And then we speak about Tanzania. Uh, as we get more into this book, 
I started to realize, you know, you think you know a lot, you think you're smart. Um, as If you, in your normal day interactions with people, if every time you always seem to know the most, you, you walk around thinking you're smart, mm-hmm. right? Reading this book made me realize that actually I don't know, I don't know a lot, mm-hmm. I don't know much. Oh, I don't know anything at all. Honestly, yeah. though, I about feel like African that's, history. Oh, right, all right. Uh, it's a bit specific, but I feel like that's 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 anything. You yeah, know? that's anything. I mean, not As to you journey through life. Yeah, yeah. Not to put too broad of a concept yeah. on what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, that's almost anything. You know, you you. It's you, endless. You, I think being <clears throat> smart at this point is your ability to unlearn, yeah. <laughs> and learn again that quickly. Such yeah, and learn something. Because your ability to learn if, something. Yeah. If you walk around acting like you already know everything, yeah. you're the dumb guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dumb guy. You're willing to listen. You've got to be others. willing to like sit and go. Actually, yeah. you're right. You know mm-hmm. that. That's the key mm-hmm. to to yeah. I yeah. guess my contention is that you know Walter Rodney. It's actually the first time hearing of him. Yeah, me too. Once starting the book, and I think I that's a point of and, contention. And me too. You're, you're an African, and I'm an African, and I was Who there in, in Africa. Africa. Okay, okay. Bro. I'll be honest though. Uh, before I met you guys and before I joined the club and stuff, I didn't really care about the information that was coming through my ears. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. They've probably like uh, the only. Hero I know, like proper hero who I'd like to uh-huh. like Black talk hero. about, is like Hector Peterson, and he, he just di- died, right? It's because they stuffed that mm. one in your face. Yeah, right? that mm. one, that one gets stuffed in your face, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and it, mm. it, you know, youth. What is it? Uh, uh, Heritage Day, no? Yeah, and 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 the reason why that one is not oh, even too day. much of a freedom threat day, is because he's a symbol, right? Right, mm. he's a symbol. He it's died not while protesting. Yeah. yeah, but these other guys have literature and books and, oh, and we don't have hear stuff about that them. we should not so be much going material. into. <laughs> I'm not even com- remembering the day Hector Peterson is commemorated. June 16th. Com- com- moderated for Youth Day. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I was <laughs> getting trouble. I, See, when I it comes to conscious yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm in trouble. No, but I think I speak for many people as well, but I think it's like, this is important, you know, yeah. like just me as an example right now, me as an example, are 99% of how Africans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're you 99%? Know? No, no, 99%. No, no, no. You went to a private school. Okay. Just fair. like me. Okay, but I mean like, I mean, so, it was my lack of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see the youth. Definitely. Oh, let awareness. me see the youth. Our, Should I see the youth? Our collective awareness yeah. of, of, of who we are of in our history. Our country, mm-hmm. our history. Problem. It's like not there. It's, it's not there. It's, it's, it's not there. For it's us not to be there. reading books, like this yeah. only now. Only it's now, yeah. Why wasn't this in English? But it would have caused problems yeah, that then. Would've it would have been problems. beef in English. In history. <laughs> it would have been beef. Yes. History like, we learned about other Yeah, history. Things. What the hell was history, guys? It would have been beef if <laughs> we learned this, What the hell was bro? history? No, it would have been beef if we learned this. Come yeah. on now. It would have been beef. Small. In our kind of schools, we went to private Especially schools. Especially how immature you are as a child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There would have been liberation movements there in the classroom. Bo- your race blood wars. will be boiling as you're writing your text. That they would have obviously lost. <laughs> you see, Peps? You see how many of us? You see how many of us? <laughs> off topic, off topic. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. All right. So, so interesting thing about the book. Right. Right. Interesting thing about the book. Walter Rudney. Um, should I drop it now? You guys know what happened to him? Do you know what happened to him, Kathy? I know you did, man. The The... <laughs> I, I know the concept because, I, like I said, twenty-three pages. Uh-huh. So no, 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 I know that the, the people are speculating. Not the book. Not you the know book. What happened to him? Was the was there not a bomb in in the region and he got wiped out? You know what? I don't know the specifics, but I know he was assassinated. Assassinated. Yeah, the, that's what I'm saying. The, so bomb. car bomb. In the first twenty-three pages, it was a car bomb. It was a car bomb. I think it was car. I think yeah, it was, it was a bomb. In the car. It was a. Well, it wasn't just him who died. No, because that's I don't know they, the specifics. Look, look, yeah. look! In the beginning, they talk about how he's that he's dead. Let mm-hmm. me ask ChatGPT. Uh, <laughs> brilliant! <laughs> did GPT for you, Walter? Yeah, we've Ruh. got a ChatGPT section in our show now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's gonna change the game. Yeah, we're gonna change the game. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's gonna tell me he died instantly when a bomb placed in his car detonated. Uh, it is in the car. He entered the vehicle. Walter was just thirty-eight years of that mm-hmm. time. Walter Rudney. Okay, then. He, doesn't say much more about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. it might have just been him. He stepped mm-hmm. into his car and died. He was bombed in his car. Yeah, the the book makes it sound Whoa. like it wasn't yeah. just him. Yeah, I know it was a car bomb. Yeah. Well, Whoa. not a car bomb. I know it was a bomb. I know it was a bomb. So oh, yeah. we get it right. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We were talking about uh, the fact that Walter Rudney got assassinated. That's right. Yeah. And I don't know if I said this in the previous podcast or, well, we don't know what cut, but I mentioned that. Um, he reminds me of like Steve Biko because mm. he had a similar process mm. yeah. where his writing was banned yeah. um, and then he was killed by the apartheid state. So, ah, uh, Walter Rudney, 
uh, he studied first in Jamaica. We established, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he got banned from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know that? Well, well, now it we wasn't the book. I now we do. Because <laughs> we talked about it. Yeah, yeah he, but we know. We do. Do, you know, do you know why he got banned? Who knows why he got banned? I would assume it's something to do with his writings. No, nope. and nothing to do with his writings. It, not really. His writing. You don't know, should I tell you? No. Like, he's just looking at everybody. Yeah, he's just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we don't okay. know. I'm just assuming me like, what did man do then? Okay, so so he was obviously studying, he was studying African history mm-hmm. in Jamaica. I forgot which university. But then he would take his affairs outside of the university. So he would go into the community and host lectures at night, mm. teaching his people about African history. He was then labeled as a security threat and then banned from coming into the country or something like that. Snap. He then moved to Tanzania to, I think, to continue his studies in Tanzania, which made it worse. Where was he born? Guyana. Okay. Yeah. Guyana is next to, what did I, I wrote this. Uh, it's, it's in South America, definitely. In Georgetown, Guyana. It's next to Venezuela South and Brazil. Brazil. So bordering Guyana. Uh, Georgetown, Guyana is Venezuela, the country Venezuela, and the country Brazil. Mm-hmm. So South America, mm-hmm. which also has a rich tradition of uh, fighting against imperialist uh, forces, mm-hmm. right? Nations. Um, so he went to Tanzania, which is crazy because that was the epicenter of the South African liberation struggle, right? Mm-hmm. Tanzania. Which, I don't know if that's even recorded, that part. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Not Excuse sure. me. Yeah, that... <laughs> Yeah, that might not be recorded. Mm. But he went to Tanzania and I I mentioned how it's just funny how a lot of our black conscious movements I did yeah, this is mentioned. That's the word Azania. Yeah, it has the The word word Azania Azania inside of it. Azania, that's the way they pronounce it. Azania. Mm -hmm. And it's actually Tanzania. Mm -hmm. But we we say Tanzania, right? Usually. I think it's pronounced Tanzania. He then went to study in Tanzania, uh, where he got Woke, woke. He got triple woke. <laughs> you only said two wokes. <laughs> so you know. No, I'm just taking it up a level to say that he got, he got three times woke, woke, woke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I was saying that um, when I was coming into my awareness of certain things, of my identity as an African person, <clears throat> for me, the journey started with spirituality. And because it started with spirituality, I then built a negative perception towards politics. And this happens in isolated spiritual communities today. People who are studying just spirituality think politics is the enemy. They see politicians as the enemy because to them, spirituality is the ultimate truth. And politics is a world of lies and deceit and lying to the people, et cetera, et cetera. So I didn't know that there's a whole cohort of people that think the way we think. Inside mm-hmm. on this in this path, but from a different perspective, they're looking at the history politically, mm. right? Um, so yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, the journey to self discovery can be lonely when you don't know that there's. And you know what? It always seems like these cultures died back then in the 1950s. You know, mm. where are the? It's, it's like you'd ask yourself, where are the academics, the public intellectuals, all right? that were as intelligent as your Steve Biko's, yeah. your um, Walter Rudney was a public intellectual. Where are those black voices? The, um, what's this guy's name who grew up in the era of Walter? I was inspired by him as well. But Dr. John Henry Clark, people that were conscientizing the majority of Africans, right? You're almost like, where is that? It's almost like any thing that you're studying that reminds you or that gives you any kind of true empowerment as an African person it's almost like you're studying clips from 19 wherever you're studying authors from a very long time ago and not contemporary authors but if you look for it actually what we today call the EFF and some of the intellectuals people speaking out in there the EFF has a book club you you know this I didn't know there's a book book club online right now you can go to YouTube and search EFF book club and they talk about some of the books that we might come across. Awesome. Yeah, they, it didn't last long. I don't know why they stopped it. They started it during lockdown. So during lockdown, they started this online book club thing where the leaders of the EFF were breaking down some important books. And one of the episodes were really good. I think it was hosted by, 
Mbuyiseni, Dr. Mbuyiseni Nglozi, mm -hmm. who has a PhD. Or maybe it was Floyd. No, it was Floyd Shivambo, Deputy President of the EFF. So if you've ever listened to, when you think about the economic free, freedom fighters, you might just think Julius Malema. Mm -hmm. And he has his own personality, right? He's very divisive and et cetera. <laughs> yeah, we hear that. Yeah, yeah. He has his own type personality. But if you listen to the other leaders of the EFF, they're very intelligent. They, I think they give the EFF spirit and they're the ones who give their, their economic, pol their policies weight. Right? The EFF has a Is there a strategy manifesto. behind that? Like, yeah, like I think Julius is the people's the person. No, not just that. Like, yeah. <clears throat> often I feel like politics has this tendency to poster the dumb child and keep all the smart people in the offices in the, in the back. It's right? war. <laughs> it's war. You can't. Sorry, sorry. I'm taking us off topic, but I'm like, no. I is think, that a strength thing? No, because I, I mean, as much as yeah. Juju de definitely is educated and you can tell, like he's one of the few presidents who said, I'm going back to learn some yeah. stuff because I obviously don't know yeah. what I'm talking mm. about all the time, you know? Mm. Uh, but you cool feel like there's see, some heavy hitters I just, hidden. I just feel like he's always being irrational. Hectic. In his thinking. He's always being hectic. He did a lot. Yeah. 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 I think it's just that the everyday person cannot relate with the caliber of intellectuals. Mm. That's why the intellectuals are advising the main guy that, mm. yo, take this stance on this. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't think they can right. rally up a mass of crowds as good as A. Julius can. They're not as charismatic of speakers. Okay, fair, fair. Right? Because and and, people are moved and by do you think that's right? Do you think that's right? I think it's sad. I wish, I wish the mean, the average of intelligence was higher. Mm, fair. So we can be listening to the Floyds. And critiquing. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. Then Boisene is more. Oh, yeah. And critiquing. <laughs> Man, wasn't like, yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> we had this conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> and critiquing. And critiquing. And critique. No, you critique Criticize everyone, them. right? But then that level of intelligence of, and awareness, you know, you'll be able to shift out mm. what people are saying mm. better mm. than just having a voice speak and it sounds so well to you it resonates in your soul then you move and do anything 100 mm. percent. so i fully agree with yeah that. so i mean the point really is that there's a there's a collective of really smart people people who are we call it black consciousness in the era of steve biko but people who are afrocentric right who's thinking modalities are aligned different from the what we complain about the education system today right um and i think as the conversation went on before the camera cut we tried to allude to how walter walter says um walter has a critique about us yeah about us yes mm. it's like we're not uh, the only ones who are at fault for there you go. no yeah i remember what i was saying i was Our saying economic that economic uh, underdevelopment or wh whatever yeah when you read the title <clears throat> of this book mm. you might think that it's another we're with, the victims we're though. the victims white people fall. we've been done wrong yeah and this i said, is what the white people said, did no, to us no no he does say in the book that even though the europeans and these folks have a part Dan to play Dan. we, we have, have a part, part to and play. it may mm -hmm. even be the larger part mm -hmm. to play mm -hmm. in this yeah underdevelopment mm -hmm. or having seen the underdevelopment happen of Africa. and it, 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 it actually brought a question to me where when you when you asked the, the remember when we when we talked about when we were talking about chinua Achebe and we talked about how do you think that they were worthy of being enslaved right and, and or colonized yeah right because we had that we had yeah. that question on the, had that on, that, on that part we, oh, yeah. we had that conversation on the podcast on that at that time and we were like we don't think so we just think we're not a malevolent people or we're not a violent people mm. it's our nature yeah, Ooh, do. well at least that's what i said yeah and i'm interested to socially see, to go back to that conversation to that conversation yeah. with this with this knowledge with and this, this, with this context yeah now we'll definitely get into it yeah. but um, one of walter's critiques right about us and our contribution to our underdevelopment right he says that Africans are too obsessed, I'm paraphrasing, but with the sublime, right? Now, earlier I spoke about metaphysics mm -hmm. yeah. before we got cut off. And what I came to understand by that statement is that he, he says our, our science needs to be saved from our, our, the sublime. And what he, I think what he means from that is that we need to separate our spirituality from our science. Mm -hmm. As African people, mm -hmm. because our worldview 
is fundamentally spiritual. Mm. And I use the word metaphysical. And when it comes to economic development, that directly relates to a command of physics, mm -hmm. of physical reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they said in development. That's what development is about. We're going to have a, <laughs> we'll have a part where we talk about development in detail. Mm. This is still just setting the context. And I think this book is just crazy for that because mm. this There's book, you need to do a lot of work before you approach this book. You know, we've, we've asked the question before, can you just give this to a random person? No, mm -hmm. this is a no, this is a no. <laughs> we don't read any books that you can just give to anyone and, <laughs> and they'll be the fine. Whole, really? Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are no yeah, books, bro. Yeah, yeah. There of are them. no books, bro. Chino Machere. I came here like they are so barbaric. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about initial this as well. Thoughts, initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. We talked about this as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. The books we've been no reading book ahead. Can yeah. give to anyone yeah. and say here, Damn. and they come out like, ah, oh, God, that was let such someone a simple read. Well, let's go. <laughs> I understand the everything. <laughs> as black people, we're too correct. <laughs> it's not gonna so, happen. So this is part of the context, right? Um, uh, so we are too obsessed with the metaphysical. And I, I remember asking Kathleen if you know what metaphysics is. Yeah, and I said no, so and no. then he explained it. Yeah, so But I'm gonna do it for you guys. No, Marcelo, <laughs> what is, <laughs> please tell us what it is. Please tell us what it is, please. Wait, let me check what meta is. You can check it again. <laughs> so no, the, the prefix meta means beyond, beyond or- trans Transcending. Or transcending, mm -hmm. right? So metaphysics, we're talking about anything that's beyond- Physics. Physics, mm -hmm. right? And um, in, and these, these, it's, it's developed into an entire science. Some people call it a pseudoscience, meaning a fake. The prefix pseudo mm. meaning fake science. Mm. Just like, um, it's funny. It's funny because in, in metaphysic principles, that's where you start to see the, the rising of ideas like the law of attraction, for example. That's a metaphysical principle. The mm. idea that what you think about becomes reality. Or what you think about the most is what you attract into your reality. Mm. That's a metaphysical concept, mm -hmm. right? That thoughts become things. Mm -hmm. That's where metaphysics comes in, right? Yeah. But there's there's a more scientific principle. There's a more scientific way to approach it because when you talk metaphysics, you start talking about the science of vibration, right? And there's a reason why they say what you think about gets attracted to you. They they try to get into a scientific description of it. Some people call it a pseudoscience. Um, but there's definitely something to it mm -hmm. because now we have quantum physics and quantum physics is starting to give us the same realization that metaphysics gave us. Because in quantum physics, two particles can exist in two different places at the same time a the, uh, as a wave and a particle, particle as a potential. And the observer plays an important re part in yeah, how the state, how the state of the thing, thing behaves. Works, so yeah. you're, the fact of you observing a, a thing mm -hmm. decides whether it's a particle or a it's wave. a wave, right? Meaning it decides whether it's a solid thing or it's a potential reality. Mm -hmm. So you're... You as an observer affect physical reality and that's kind of metaphysical in its nature as a concept to think that your thoughts can influence the things, the, the physical very things. natural, <laughs> physical uh -huh. state of being. So, so yeah. there is validity to this thing called metaphysics, but the way we interpret it, now when we come back to the common person, I was talking about the difference between an initiate and an adept. Mm. Sorry, I should have done this. Initiate, adept. Mm. Right? Mm. Because the initiate hears all of this stuff but does not have the maturity to understand when it applies, what does not like even have the intelligence. Because I was listening to you guys talk about quantum physics <laughs> just now, and I was like, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Physics yeah. class, grade 11. I'm playing. Don't do that, I'm playing. Don't do that to me. Do you know I didn't take physics in grade 10. <laughs> Would you like to with me? No? <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> I should have been, but besides the point. <laughs> you see? <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's getting no, good. I, I, was, I, was, I was lost. At like, I was following. I could understand what yeah. you mean about mm -hmm. how the, the, the uh, like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The beholder is the one who makes the thing what it is or whatever the case may uh -huh. be, whether it's a physical thing or whether it's potential to be a physical thing. I could follow the conversation. It's just that as you guys are speaking, I was like, you guys it seem like yeah, you guys so know a lot more about this. Parallel. This is yeah. the first time I'm having a good quantum physics conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even, we didn't even <laughs> really get to that. Yeah, we really? should get to that. Yeah, yeah we should really get really to that. that. Maybe science yeah. should be our next the, set of books. Yeah. Set of books for sure, okay. Uh -huh. for sure. Yeah. yeah, maybe science should be our next yeah, set of books. Maybe there's something you asked for it, just remember, you asked yeah. for it. Yeah. No, we had was It was in my lostness that I somehow asked for it, I guess. But you see, your inquisitive mind has propelled. No, for sure, because as you guys said, I don't know if this is going to be my most quiet episode 
episode, guys. I am <laughs> listening today. Yeah, like, yeah. We'll unpack. We'll unpack. Yeah, yeah, but the the point is that there is a scientific process right. to metaphysics. Mm. It's not just a pseudoscience. It's not just up in the air. The idea is that spirituality had a science element. This, it followed the scientific process. We didn't just come up with things that they had to be realities beyond the physical third dimension. There had to be an observation. I just forgot what the scientific process is. But there had to be an observation of a phenomena and they needed to be Some repeatable tests, tests uh, and repeatable um, outcomes. Outcome, I yeah, just forgot what the scientific process is. The idea is that our spirituality was not this thing that we made up. Like Africans were just premature, so they just made up all these beliefs and they believe in all these things, witchcraft and voodoo and hoo-hoo and... No, there, there was a spiritual science and then the initiates get confused. The problem is we're listening to the conversation of initiates and not adepts. When you listen to an adept, all of a sudden, all that sh stuff mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa, I never thought about it like that. Oh, mm -hmm. damn, I see how that's possible. Oh, damn. Right? I think so, like what you just did now with the metaphysics and also relating to quantum 100%. physics. 100%. You know, you'll just believe something if they say that, if the wind passes by and then that's probably a spirit that's telling us something and you just believe compared uh -huh. to now seeing the repeated steps and testing out a certain natural to, principle and be like, I understand why it actually makes sense. Why it could make yeah. sense, right? So Walter's critique then of African people is that we are too concerned with the sublime. And, and, if, and a, an example could be right now, our podcast got cut off, right? We got cut off and we had to rehave some certain conversations. Now an African would go into panic. Do the ancestors not maybe want me to share this information? Or is this not meant to be? Did I record on the wrong day? Am I saying the wrong things? They would get so involved beyond the physical thing of what speaking of which i'm going to check our camera for safety sake <laughs> yeah, yeah check it because what what could emmanuel what could have physically happened is that the the phone got too hot because it's in the sun yeah and it stopped recording 100 that's the physics of what could have happened but there must be a metaphysical explanation for an african trying person to find some explanation as to why. and and i think walter kind of alludes to that tendency to not master our physical reality while obsessed with our metaphysical reality led to our underdevelopment in certain mm, places. I, I guess that's the question of why. Why in our groups did we... Um, obsess over the metaphysical? Obsess over the metaphysical. I think because the greatest people in African civilization had a command over the language of spirit and metaphysics. So we looked up to them. That's why we obsessed over it. Western civilization, in a sense, in a sense, is immature because of their lack of spiritual maturity, right? So the African person is the one who developed the spiritual narrative for the world, the concept of divinity. Those are all ideas. And Walter points to that as some of our contributions to European civilization. There's a chapter when we're talking about our mm -hmm. contributions as African people to Europe. European civilizations, when you're still coming from the perspective that we were just hunters and gatherers and we were lost until white people came and saved us, then you won't understand this. But if you've done the work to understand that Africa had a bigger role, it was a developing nation with its own sciences that came up with technologies like writing and language, we then create the, the idea of divinity, God, and everything that inspires Western religion is imbued or comes from African um, African sciences, mm -hmm. right? So you can think that the kings of that time, there was always a divine aspects to kingdom, right? He was chosen by God. What, what? The the most powerful people in society had a command over topics of spirituality. So I think our obsession, unlike the European, the most prominent people in European society were the people who had a strong command over physical sciences. Mm -hmm. Your Albert Einsteins, mm. your Isaac Newtons, mm. those are the people who, your Thomas Olivia. Edisons, mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me, industrialists, people who built factories, yeah. Henry Ford. Instead of saying the lightning is God telling us to go to sleep, they were <laughs> uh -huh. like, we can do something uh -huh. with this. Uh -huh. They were yeah. like, and, uh, we, turn this design, we can capture the lightning yeah, in a reservoir yeah. and, okay. and okay. generate electricity. Okay. And produce it for and masses. It, it's making me think about how why we were again taking it back to Chinua's conversation because remember in Chinua who came first 
They didn't attack us with an army, you know mm-hmm. that. The church came. The mm-hmm. church mm-hmm. came. The missionaries, the missionaries came, came first to, to invade enslave our country. Our country. Wait, so are imagine you, are that. You, are you saying because they were they came with a religious aspect? That we were like, oh, us. these are the mm-hmm. guys. Uh-huh. They That's see. Why they when see. they were like, get on the ship, we were like, guys, who stayed? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a little bit more hectic I'm kidding, than that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> was, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. But I mean, even because in the book, in the book, they said that a white man appeared in, mm-hmm. in Chinua Achebe. Things fall apart. They said that a white man, there were rumors of a one white man appearing on the shores. One white man. And they murdered him. Yeah. And then uh, Shin Okonko says, you don't murder someone who doesn't speak. Yeah. He must speak first and then he must say what he's here for. And then you murder him. You don't murder him if he doesn't speak. Then after that, they just came with some church guys. Mm. And they asked for a spot to set up church. They gave them a spot to set up church. And from then the, it was the a wrap. The part of the land. <laughs> that's and, yeah, that's another. Because we were still being spiritual. Oh, yeah. we'll give them the part that God doesn't <laughs> love where nothing grows. <laughs> and they were like physical. Like, all right, let's just get rid of the weeds. Well, if, uh, we, just, uh, <laughs> if we just uh, fertilize <laughs> the soil. If we just get rid of the weeds and fertilize the <laughs> soil a bit, then something will, then yeah, something then will, then something will grow. Will grow. And what he's saying makes so much sense, right? Uh, uh-huh. It makes so much sense, uh-huh. right? Yeah. yeah. So, so. Yeah, so that's part of Walter's critique. That's one of is that, his Is that metaphysics critiques. as well? If I can like combine those two concepts and say, yeah, that is true. That could be what? believable. What? Is if that metaphysics what? as well? If I combine what you're saying about what Walter Rodney said about our underdevelopment, which is being too... Uh, 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 attached to, attached the sublime to the sublime as opposed to the physical, me connecting those things and saying that's true. Is that metaphysics? I don't know. Just That's a, a good one. question. Just a, a quick one. It's a good question. I don't okay. know. I don't okay. know. I, 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 I mean, I'm still not understanding what, what metaphysics, metaphysics is. is. Like, actually, beyond it's physics. Fine. Look, yeah. look, look. I understand it to it. Like, it's like the Tao thing, man. When you yeah. were like, yeah, I'm down. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on. Stay there no, for a second. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay, but is I my mic still good? Yeah, the, my mic's mic still good. No, but I got you. I got you. I got you. I think let's move on for the for the viewers. Just because of my dumb dumbness doesn't mean that we must all stop. Okay. But yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's move on. Let's actually talk about this book, right? Let's talk about this how book. Europe underdeveloped Africa. We mentioned that it was originally published in 1972. I need you to think about that for a second. A lot of scholars call this book prophetic. Because in the book, he alludes to a concept that we today call neo-colonialism, which he didn't touch about. Um, but he spoke about, you know what, I think we should just get into the context of the book in order to understand really wh- how this was valuable. Um, um, the first concept I think we need to break down, the title is How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Mm-hmm. So we need to have a conversation before we even, like if I were to ask you right now, how did Europe underdevelop Africa? What would your answer mean? How did they undevelop us? How did Europe underdevelop, underdevelop. Africa? Would you have questions? Would you be able to answer that question? I think I'd have questions. What What would be your first question? I I, I see it more as theft than underdevelopment. So what would be your first question? How would you answer? Um, my task is for you to answer the question. I'm putting a oh. thesis for you. Okay, okay. How? Okay, I, look, You're I see underdeveloped it, us. I see it as, How? I see it as theft as more than underdevelopment. I, I see it like they took so we couldn't use... And then they kind of gave back the bare minimum, let me which re- is why we cannot. Okay, so you, you, you have past the growth. You have something. Yeah. Let me ask you this. It's because I'm on page twenty three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, and this is why I'm picking on you today. No, no, no. Okay, okay. So, Use me as your guinea pig. Uh-huh. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, this, <laughs> <laughs> is that a? No, I had a thought. I was like, I remember there was an episode where I was attacking Emmanuel. It was the last one. It was. <laughs> it was sapiens. So, it was sapiens. We were attacking Emmanuel. <laughs> no <laughs> attack. No <laughs> attack. <laughs> so Emmanuel, you got us. You got to come in. Yeah. Catch no, us no, defense. No, nah, it's no, not even a thing. But I, what I want to ask Katla mm-hmm. is. So if we're going to say Europe, we need to get the first thing we need to get right is definitions. Mm. Yeah. If we're going to say Europe underdeveloped Africa. Mm. Well, what is development? What does develop mean? Yeah. We're clearly saying it underdeveloped us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What the f- oh, actually, does that mean? Actually, we talked about what develop means. What, does, what this, is it? What is it? I, I'm forgetting now. We talked about ah. it. Emmanuel, I'm forgetting now. What is development? We just talked development about in human society is a many-sided 
process, right? Ah. Acquiring the skill. Yeah, he read the book. Capacity. He's reading notes as he's notes. speaking. Uh, as he's uh, speaking. <laughs> but then it's like, what I remember. Yeah, yeah. describe it. Yeah. No, describe no, it. Go, so, for, yeah. go for it. Go for it. Development in human society, many sided process at the level of the individual implies increased skill and capacity, greater freedom for creativity. Let's stop. Let's stop. That's a question. Right? That's, That's a nice a, way to stop. It's a nice yeah, place. greater freedom for creativity. <laughs> for creativity. <laughs> and then what's under? <laughs> ah, I need to get about to. That. That's all in chapter one, actually. It's crazy. I need to. Yeah. But we talk, we, we're first unpacking development. All right. We're talking about development, yeah. right? Emmanuel, you started by saying development is a? In hum- it's a multi-sided process. process yeah. It's a multi-sided process. Yeah. So development has a lot of things to it. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of size to develop. It's not linear. All right, so what are these sides to development, right? Continue. Yeah, yeah. continue. Oh, okay, at the level of individual implies the, a- the level of the individual. Yeah. Stop. So we have this thing called development. It has many sides to it. Mm-hmm. We have to look at it from all of these sides. For us to make the statement, Europe underdeveloped us, we need to look at all the sides of development and try kind of imagine the effect of Europe's underdevelopment. Mm-hmm. You see, what this book did for me, Katlako, is that before this book, right, I had these ideas based on what people have said about what Europe has done to us and the West. I couldn't even differentiate, okay, just Europe? What about America? Did they have a role in in the ethnic maps of Africa? Who are our enemies? Okay, I kind of get that. Okay, maybe Russia is our ally. What? So the China and stuff, those are friends. (laughs) But the, the West is our enemy. Who is the West? It's Europe. Okay. America? What about America? Yeah, them too. Yeah, them too. Them too. But they're on our side. <laughs> <laughs> so it's vague. It was all this vague information no that true. you just hear through the grapevine. No true. <laughs> Settle. <laughs> <laughs> through the grapevine. Right. And what this book does is that it crystallizes all these things that you might hear from politicians. Hey, hey. The, the reason why we're in the state of as, as Africa is because of colonialism. Okay. Full stop. Which is Full stop. It is there. <laughs> no further right. explanations. Yeah. yeah, because of slavery and colonialism, we're still dealing with the effects of the colonial past. What does that mean? Mm. This book explains what that means. And mm. it starts with its description of developing. Mm. So multi-sided process of... Yeah, many-sided. It begins with the individual. We start mm. with the person. The mm-hmm. development of a person. And and it is exactly what you might think it is, Gatli. What do you think individual deve- stop? What do you think individual <laughs> development might be? Just what does education, it mean? Education, de- health, uh p- growth, skills, uh knowledge, uh-huh. Emmanuel information. Reed. Okay, Emmanuel Reed, individual development. Yeah, at the level of individual, it implies increased skill, capacity, greater freedom, creativity self-discipline, responsibility, mm. and material well-being. Mm. Health. Mm. And material. Isn't this what we're going through personally, Kathy? Mm. Think about your journey as a group of friends. We're mm. reading. Wouldn't you say that you have increased skills and capacity mm-hmm. in this stage of your life? Mm-hmm. I mean, I drove from Centurion yesterday to come record a podcast. Wouldn't, you, <laughs> wouldn't you say you have greater about freedom? Books. What did you say you have greater freedom? I mean, freedom? I drove from Centurion. Last uh-huh. night. Oh, yeah, that's, dude, that's when you wanted me to say that line, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> say that again, say that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and would you say that your self-discipline is improving? Oh, a lot, yeah. I mean, I drove from Centurion yesterday, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but think about it. Isn't that what our conversations no, true, have yeah, generally yeah, yeah. been about? No, very true. And what I want you to think about is, haven't we been saying how privileged we are to even just be on a journey of, Where we can of self-development? self-development. Self, yeah. So what's happening to everyone else? They're being underdeveloped, bro. They're underdeveloped. People are underdeveloped. Wait, what do you mean everyone else? <laughs> you mean everyone else? Yes. What, what do you mean by yes. everyone else? No, no, no. I mean, not so, everyone <laughs> else. I mean, there's some everyone woke except people. Us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, someone, down the chain, right? Down the exactly. chain. <laughs> down the chain. Down the chain. Down the chain. So happening to no, no, I, no. I think what he's trying to say is, why isn't this as public? Why isn't this as, self-development type of thing as public? As Why isn't it culture? Yeah, why isn't it culture? culture. Why isn't it your day-to-day? Yeah. Why, why, why is our culture... Why aren't we the last ones to it. figure this out? Uh, why aren't we yeah. like the stragglers? Why yeah. are we first in line? Uh-huh. <laughs> why are we at the top That's deep, it? because there's a question then, could we be... Are we being underdeveloped mm. as, as people in J? If it starts at the individual le- v- level, yeah. we're all going to school. 
Kati, there's people who are going to school and then they go to Kong. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> they go to what? Kong. Kong. What's Come, that? a club, a club. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You are in the chair, <laughs> Yeah, See. yeah. No, no, but think about it. Not there true. are people being educated, but for what? If they can't even develop on a personal level, yeah. forget our societies mm -hmm. and our families and our country. Personally, how is our personal development coming along? Look, it's it's who nice. Who teaches us? Who teaches us? Hey, Kati. It's important as a black child to journal. How many of the audience journal? How many people sit down every day, write down their thoughts, organize their life that way? Yeah. If you're liking our video, if you're watching, please, please, please at least comment. <laughs> please comment on that because it's important. It's important. Like, articulate to say, your even if your answer is no and you feel bad, like tell us and we will help you. Yeah, we'll do you help journal you or do you see it. that as just a thing that's not even important? What is I know journaling? Someone, I, know, I told him about a, a friend of mine who, you know, we were going into a heavy board of directors meeting and I was keeping my thoughts reserved and nice and carefully calculated because I journaled the day before and 100. the day of, and I wrote, this guy got in there, bro, and was blurting and blurting and blurting Rambling. and blurting. And then afterwards he felt bad because he felt like, you know, he said too much yeah. or whatever. And I felt like good because I spoke within the confinements of bounds of what, what, you, what I you journaled, journaled about, you know, yeah. because I let all my frustrations out on paper and then I kind of, you know, cleaned it up cleaned for the, it up for the mm -hmm. board of directors meeting mm -hmm. such that I could speak in these, conf and I could be very clear about what I'm there saying, you but without, you the know, without added the emotion. Arms, uh, uh, and it's just, the side man, chance. it just gets to me, Man, and man, everything gets to everyone, you know, like, yeah, without all that, yeah, little push, posh, posh, posh yeah. stuff, drama, human drama stuff. Mm -hmm. I kind of just presented, you know, mm -hmm. my and they respected me for that, you know, and and even that guy respected me for it because he was like, Yo, bro, I feel like I did this and I did this, and yeah. I was calm, I was like, No, bro, it's cool, and he was like, No, bro, yo, what if, what if this, and I was mm. like, No, yeah. you're stressing because you didn't prepare, you, you. You were all over the show in yeah. there. And it's often that he's all over the show. And you know what he said to me? I said, you should journal more. And he said, nah, my journal's in my head. And I was like, I can see. <laughs> Makes sense. I can see that it's coming out of his words. It's coming out so, as yeah. you're thinking it. And therefore, it's not structured. Yeah. And now you uh -huh. look like an idiot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And <laughs> probably him realizing that he was wrong or he should have said something that's it's also part of his development. No, true. But not as pacey as if you had to journal. And, no, true. And, and this, man, this book is it's for the genius. Walter is a genius. Brilliant guy. As a thinker. Emmanuel, this will help you understand Africa's development, underdevelopment better, mm. right? <coughs> Excuse me. I like the way you and asked that nuanced. question just by the way, because he's like, are we underdeveloped? Because and here we are going through self-development and someone who we went to school with is at Kong. He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Spending and, his and entire salary. This is uh. where it comes into play, Katleho. This is where, on the larger scale of things, it comes into play. When you see students at WITS striking for free education and striking and fighting the management with all they might, seemingly fighting for something that's justified. How many of those people fighting for free education compile a personal budget? How many of them sit at home and understand actually how money works, cash flow, right? How many of them have proper control of their finances in their own house to be demanding okay. free education? <coughs> Excuse me. How do they think that should be implemented? I'm not saying they shouldn't get free education. That's a big conversation. conversation yeah. That's a big conversation. We'll have that yeah. later on. But the question is the development self. Development of self. The self-development. I mean, where, where determines the development of the nation. 100. percent I mean, we're a unit that have, has always realized that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marcel was a big preacher of that. You know, yeah, whenever yeah, yeah. you're frustrated with something, he's like, no, no, no. You need to understand that it's your fault. <laughs> 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 that he you're always, the problem. Yeah, he always says that. It's like, now nah, when someone, oh, bro, I'm at work, my manager, and then he says, yeah, he's yeah. like, no, 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 bro, you need to understand. And he always says, the reason why you're feeling this way is because your of fault. you. It's your fault. It's your fault. The heads, the heads. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's him. No, that's you. That's what you always say. Yeah. Yeah. No, you need to understand it. That's your fault, Gatti. Yeah. <laughs> it's your fault. No, you must change. Because everything else around you, you acts how it acts. Yeah, you, you are the one. I'm like, damn, this yeah. guy. <laughs> damn. So we've we've been growing a lot yeah. through reading, through going through this book club. This right. book is, is definitely another point. It's right? right? a tough one. And um, we've been talking about how that seems rare. Like uh -huh. just in, you know, we mm. struggle to get mm. members to actively... Participate, participate in these type of books in the in the book club yeah mm -hmm. no 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 not, not in the book clubs in these type no, in of a books. book club sorry just in to get other people to join a book club can be difficult people join it's the reading 
I feel like yeah. people join. It's the reading and participation. You know, people join. At one point, we had squad deep on WhatsApp. We were squad yeah. deep, so people join. Yeah. Uh, uh, during December, when we got quiet, they left. You saw them, the yeah, ones yeah. who joined Our for fault, the joining or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for we sure, our fault as well. But a lot of them left during December. But people join. It's the reading. Yeah. It's the reading because if you look at it, so, bro. Like um, I, I. I oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Am I? Am I? Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, I was, oh, no. I was gonna say that's fine, yeah. but the point is that it seems rare to have this culture this energy of development yeah like every of day we're growing currently if people could know how we live every day it's something new <laughs> yeah oh, no, for sure yeah. that's really? how you see it oh yeah. wow yeah. oh hey that's did you, you check out this about, hey yeah. did you learn about this yeah. that's every day that's every day now yeah yeah it's like, every and i don't think now. people live like that in general no right. no because it's easier to live a life where someone's guiding you or right. you just go with the motions you know if you flow go with the motions it's soft it's soft life it's soft life it's not soft life it's it's anything but it's it's actually, actually hard. Pretty it's hard, actually hard. Then, yeah. So oh, oh, we're gonna get into it. Um, we're gonna get into it because we also have to describe what underdevelopment means. Yeah. There's, there's nuances. Yeah. There's nuances into what that word yeah. means. Um, you gotta th- just as a foreshadowing, think about what might be the difference between underdevelopment mm. and undevelopment. It's just foreshadowing. Just foreshadowing. Yeah. I just put it in your head to and be you like, ask hey, me that question, eh? <laughs> there's, some, there's undevelopment and <laughs> underdevelopment. Why? What does? What is that all about? So mm-hmm. let's continue. We're talking about development. Yeah. Um, um, and I think these concepts that you're putting forward were developed by Che Che Guevara, by the way. Mm, I saw it in, in 1964. So what we're talking about right now, we're spoken about by Che Che Guevara. Um, if you don't remember, so you see that guy on the shirt that we all wear yeah, with the star. Yeah, with the revolution. Yeah, mm. yeah, he led a revolution. Is maybe I can find out more about him, but he describes development as this stuff, right? Yeah. So we talked about greater freedom, increase, increase skill and capacity, creativity, self discipline, responsibility. When we started meeting, Kathy. I think part of our big development point is you need to start being responsible for more things in your life. Mm. Your house, you like, you just need to take. A lot more things that we weren't taking seriously mm. have to take seriously. seriously. Mm. So just know that responsibility has been defined in 1964 by somebody to say this is part of self-development. Yeah. We're learning about it. And we're almost 30, Emmanuel, mm. and nobody ever said. So <laughs> yeah. be responsible. Well, they did, but <laughs> didn't. Not as expensive. Not like, not, like, not like this. Yeah, not yeah. like this. Yeah. Not at the rate in which we're going. Yeah. yeah. And then material well-being is, is also part of personal development. So getting okay, like more money, so, yeah. that means you're growing, you're developing as a person when all those things start coming into your life. Okay, so the first level of development is individual. Individual. Next mm. level, Emmanuel. Mm. Jesus. Ooh, I don't think I have that <laughs> next level at the Jesus. level of the sun. <laughs> yeah. You don't have the other yeah, one? Yeah, I don't have the other one. Okay, In I'll tell past, you what the things. other one is. So the next level is the social group level, social development. Yeah. When we talk about development, I'll just lay them all out for you now for the listeners, right? It's, it's individual development or mm. personal development, mm. social development, mm. economic development. Mm. That's the three main types of development that we speak about. Mm. And we'll talk about economics. Mm. You'll start to understand what the economy actually mm-hmm. is or what economic development is at least. Mm. So on a social level, this is implied by an increase in the capacity to regulate both internal and external relationships. Say it again. I'll say it again. It implies, social development implies an increasing capacity to regulate both internal relationships and external. So internal relative to what? External relative to what? Right? Internal relationships, let's think about a society. So relationships within the society and relationships external to the society. So the society and other societies, right? Yeah. So when we say we're developing socially, what we're saying is that we're able to regulate more how we relate to each other and how we relate to other societies. Yeah, so mm. that, that... That comes through through laws, rules. Development, is it relating to people... With each other, with each within other. the society. Within the same... I'm same, not allowed to steal your stuff. I was about to say, yeah, it just means that I should be... Like the, the, the social social development yeah. is the regulation. So I can talk to you. Yeah. I can also hug you. Our capacity to regulate. I can also kiss you. Yeah. But if I was in Ghana, 
I wouldn't be able to kiss you. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> because, like, yeah. context of yeah. the society uh-huh. you're yeah. in as well. Because I don't have control of that. Yes. Yeah, so and and also, the development is our ability, our capacity to regulate, not just the regulation. Yeah, our capacity it can be, to, to do it. It can be illegal so to metric. steal, yeah. but if a society cannot stop thieves if there's still high crime in the society yeah. you're not developing socially oh, yeah. you have what we call social ills social problems okay. like mm. crime I, that's actually not how well it's probably how i explained it but not how i was no, thinking no but you're right yeah, yeah, no yeah. you're 100% no it's how i explained it but it's not how well, what i was thinking like uh-huh. i was I added, thinking that I added you added the you added the the law may be there but you must be able to yeah adhere to it as yeah. well as a you must you must be able to, to enforce adapt. it for enforce it yeah oh yes yes, yes. yes. Okay. that's how you develop socially if your social if your society what you value is peace and the respect of people's property but people in your society are stealing then you're not developing as a society mm. there's a problem mm-hmm. development would be now we've controlled crime we're, now we're developing mm. now things are are getting your better. regulation or what? diseases like Policies. we can even regulate how people procreate we free condoms to the society mm. now we're playing a, a significant role now the population is not growing as fast we're developing as as the society we're going somewhere mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. that's societal development not only internally but externally i must be able to stop the violence between the zulus and, and the tswanas uh, between south africans and that's Barbara. when we're developing if they is so to understand this if there is tension between if there's still heavy tribalism and zulus are not ag- agreeing with petties and and on all of these relationships these external societal relationships are in dismay in the country then you can kind of gauge where you are in terms of a developmental level mm-hmm. so somebody who's in charge of the department of social development these are the things that should be concerning they have them. metrics there to is an check. actual department of social development mm-hmm. but i don't know if I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no smoke, no smoke. Yeah, you can you can use this in your next presentation. <laughs> <laughs> please, no, but, actually, but please that's how you this, gauge please. whether you're developing successfully as a society. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I know Are it's gonna those... it's gonna ruin our stuff, but I'm gonna check again, bro. <laughs> no, just for yeah, safety. Yeah, no, no, no. You know what? It's better. Yeah, it's, it's better, better than way. not having clips Nothing. and it's yeah. getting this lit. I mean, what are you? Good. I have no idea what happened, bro. Last time. Okay. In, bro. okay. No check. I'm not checking again. So that's yeah. why there's a department <laughs> of social development. Yeah, there is. But right? that's, that's not the conversation they're having. That is not they the conversation. Be. You know what? It's funny because they could be. Like, once you're, once you're in government, you realize. It's not clear, at least. Let's say that. The, there we the go. Problem. Transparency yeah. around those kind it's of not conversations. Yeah. It's not the ex- problem public. with government is bureaucracy. So you have geniuses. in some of those positions but they hide it they have these conversations but the problem is when they bring up the problems it's too intellectual for the politician there's a there's a, ah, man, i don't want to get into politics. which is why it can't be why it can't be publicized to us right because yeah because the person too, it will offend the person in, in charge because he didn't yeah, come up with it yeah so i don't want to talk about politics but you get fired on money myself <laughs> 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 on Monday he does not have a job the Monday the day they drops. find this podcast already <laughs> yeah the day they, they find Monday. this podcast you're out yeah the day they find I'm this podcast you're out <laughs> I'm, for, I'm on your side mm. so um, there's a policy of the African National Congress it's an actual policy called cadre deployment and every government official that I've ever spoken to describes this as one of the most detrimental policy that's affecting government cadre deployment is they deploy people for political means mm-hmm. polit- political reasons we can study the policy in more detail mm-hmm. but what ends up happening is that the person in charge of very important portfolios is not the educated person but the person who will serve the ruling party's agenda he's a cadre right you need him he's a, a struggle soldier. hero yeah comrade mm-hmm. he's a comrade <laughs> You, you said that with such disgust. <laughs> come, come, he's a. <laughs> it's personal. Gene. He's a comrade. So that, that's <laughs> part of the problem in government is that yeah. we do have intellectuals in government. I used to deny this. I used to hear this all the time. Yeah, mm, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's obviously hard to see that there's intellectuals there. Man, yeah, too we much. barely, Kathleen, we barely know well, anything. There are people. 
ten times you, smarter you than us. You said this. It's just that un- it's hard seats. to see it's hard that. To see. It's hard to That's true. Because, because, because media what's has publicized, you know, you show, there's the idiots. You know, you show oh, your no, head, no, and no, you're the no, one who's hunting. You guys, That's the you guys aren't the idiots. It's just that, yeah, 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 again, again. No, but not look, not just that. Again, which is why I watch the news, right, to gain my own opinion, and I just listen and, and stuff, and then, yeah. I, then I'm like, oh, yeah, Juju stole, and it's not the case. Yeah. It's not exactly, you know, what happened. So, I, I I totally I totally feel that you know it's th- that the face is not necessarily always the, the one, one that's speaking wrong, yeah or the yeah. one who's speaking or yeah. whatever the case may be I just feel like as government much needs better PR yes it does. simply it does. it does and the media I houses like don't help PR. it does and the media is like they the don't worst. help the, the media the, houses is to the media in it worse. South Africa yes. that's the problem the media in South Africa and, and makes our government sound like Do you know why exactly? our problem in SA I don't even want to get into it but our problem is self hate we hate ourselves yeah right yeah. so the, even the narratives in the media perpetuate that self hate self hate mm-hmm. yeah. and, and it does not communicate truly it's like this is what you're it's not a balanced reflection of it's what's going on it's still a babble though yeah it's not because no, no. underneath all this noise is a bubble of Africa we spoke about this on the last podcast as well how there's a bubble of just woke People like Bos Buddha, Bo Bo No Tabaloi, Bo Bo, you know, even though Note is a bit extreme with it, you know, you know, Bo Bo Penwell, the Black Sea, Bo 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 Welsh, Bo Bo Bo, you know, these there's a bubble, Bo Timko Timko, you know, there's this bubble of people going who are like we can speak up, we can actually solve this issue here. We need to talk. We need to talk more and bring this in so that we can deal with this thing, you know, this trauma that we're holding on to as a unit. Yeah, there's a bubble. There's a bubble. So yeah. much trauma that we're just holding onto and letting slide. Where it's like now we're like, all right, sell. we can deal. The it, smart it things, sell. the intellectual things, the well, those conversations. There. It well, doesn't sell. Well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't sell. I uh, mean, us speaking about but, this is fantastic, but, but not even. I think Walter's yeah, Walter's we've only got prophetic. Like Thirty subscribers. Yeah, go for it. Walter's prophetic in the sense, right? Yeah, that he describes the process of what leads to the eventual revolution. Or the change, the mm. big change. Mm-hmm. Okay. He, he describes it as a process. And we are well within, guys, don't get it twisted. I think, think Masul is very far in the book. <laughs> my guy, my guy. No, this book changed his life. My guy, this book. No, this book changed his I'm life. I'm like, yo, I'm waiting. Trust me. Masul finished it. But I'm sure Masul finished it. I didn't finish it. Masul finished it. Went back. Dude, went back. Went back and said, wait, let me listen again. I've got a new I got a new perspective. My laptop switched off, guys. I don't know why. Because it's plugged in. today? It's plugged in. It's, a, it's not going to work. The sabotage is not going to work. Uh, We're being sabotaged. We're being sabotaged by someone and it's not happening. Uh, oh, is it low shedding? Yeah. How can it be at this time? I we checked. had low shedding at nine. The spa was dark when we got there, remember? No, it can't be. Dang. Does it need, the, does it need the power? We'll see. Maybe it's okay. updating. It's restarting. Please keep okay. your computer on. Computer We'll side? see because it has important things. That I, oh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the steps. Huh? You said we were in there? I'll access it on my phone. Is it's it, fine. Is it, is, it the, that we're, is it that we're in a phase where you can tell that the community's got a no, lot of... No, uh, I was just saying Walter describes un- the process and to how, how revolution actually then comes about. I'm saying it's civil unrest into? one of the first steps no, I, while no. I was just talking so about. So he I says think, what the input, right? What causes that situation to eventually manifest and it's not just walter i think it's an important time to mention that this book is heavily influenced by marxism it is who marx oh ah, marx. Yo, yo you don't know karl I'm marx you don't know karl marx i didn't know karl marx a couple of years ago i'm too. sorry guys because you don't know karl marx you, don't know karl marx. you are behind in the revolution <laughs> that's okay Catch me but up. that's the that's the whole conversation. BFF members would be disappointed in you. I can leave. Maybe not the bottom. I can. <laughs> Maybe not the common. Yo. I can leave. Should I leave? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. This is good. I can. Planning. This Free is good. Shoot the boot. <laughs> <laughs> I can get out of here. I can get and, out of here. And yeah. you come back and I'm say, no, actually, man, kiss, kiss the boot. Kiss, kiss the boot. <laughs> kiss how? <laughs> <laughs> At least dead. He's dead. He's, he's finished. <laughs> he's, oh, man, what do you mean by kiss the boy? I mean kiss. Kiss how? <laughs> heavily influenced by Karl Marx and Karl Marx theories. Yes. I have no idea who Karl okay. Marx is. I'll go educate mm. myself, but I have no idea who this is. Okay. okay. We'll talk about Karl Marx. That will be next. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about Karl Marx. My laptop is back on. Awesome. 
Uh, so what phase? You said we're in the phase. We're not going to talk about the phases yet. We're still talking about development. Mm. Jeez, while, while you were a big t- topic on its own. It's, it's while you were talking topic. about, don't be... So we spoke about individual. Yeah. Uh, development on an individual level. We spoke about on a social level. Yeah. There's another step, which we didn't talk about. The economic. Economic level. Economic level. Yeah. And that's why we'll talk about Karl Marx in that phase. Because okay. uh, Karl Marx... Um, gave birth to an economic philosophy called Mar- what we today call Marxism. Marxism. Marx. Jesus. Jesus' towel. So let's talk about economic development. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a nice topic, so we're going we're gonna to take our time with mm-hmm. economic development. Uh, economics, economic one, even though, I don't know, oh, we are reading economics, so we're not necessarily economics majors. Yeah. But it's an important convo to have. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely an important yeah. conversation to have. <laughs> Guys, everything. Now, I'll read the definitions first. Mm. A society develops economically as its members increase jointly their capacity for dealing with the environment. Oh, is it shaking? It's the wine. So a society develops economically as its members increase jointly the capacity for dealing with their environment. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about that as a definition of economic development? No, for dealing with the environment, the yeah. natural that's, resources. That's I thought this was going to be about adding value or something. Something you know? to do with yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like some sort of value. Like, yeah, I was, economics. Yeah, I was they, like value. That's a breakdown of the definition. That's the that's a cut. That's how, where it is. How well and efficiently do we can deal, you deal with, with our environment? environment? That's all economics is. The resources. It's about how do we manage. You've heard this before. The economy is about how we effectively <laughs> deal with our resources. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Mm-hmm. You've heard that. Mm-hmm. I've heard that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. How we deal with our environment mm-hmm. determines our economic development. Mm-hmm. Now, <sighs> land. <laughs> Actually, land. land. <laughs> so think about it like this, right, Gatli? Think about even sapiens comes into play. It's important to mention, I don't know what Walter studied in London, but he has a command over biology and oh. the history of ourselves. Yeah, because it, it, I, I saw, I think, some concepts where he starts talking about our history as sapiens. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, and the types of different human civilizations that came into being, which ones succeeded and which ones didn't and why. He went into... The, this guy is no joke, man. Hey, yeah. man. I'm not saying it's a bad book. I'm just saying 20, I'm on page 23. 23. <laughs> but then before but see, even coming to the book club, we didn't even know of, man, but look how dense yeah. his teaching is. Yeah. We would have yeah. never, we yeah. would have never, never got this in the beginning. Should have should have read this before Stellenbosch Mafia. <laughs> Yo, if that was our first book, I think we needed to read everything. Yeah, and then yeah, it just yeah, goes yeah. to show how smart people are like out there, Kathleen. Yeah. So think about our societies before. What we call economic systems today are just ways that we manage our resources, Mm -hmm. right? And throughout time, our ability to work with those resources, to produce those resources has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And get this, Walter Rudney says, he makes an observation, and this is why I said he's also very good, uh, he has a command over biology. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is in natural science. He says, in natural science, there's a concept that they all understand, which is quantitative change over time becomes qualitative change. Here we go, Kathleen. <laughs> Please break that down. Right? Because <laughs> The common sorry. example that's given to illustrate this is that, for example, water's ability to absorb heat. Right? Its ability to absorb heat is a quantitative process. Depends on how much water. And until you, uh, its ability to uh, absorb heat is a qualitative process. Until it gets to a point. Boiling point. Boiling point. 
where now there's a quality to change. No, okay, and you said water, quality twice. That's why I'm confused. Okay. It's a quantitative, it's a quantitative, quantitative process, process. Yes. Until we reach boiling point, point. Yes, yes. Of the of the water. Of the so water. So it's about it's about in the beginning it's a how much water. How much heat? How much heat do you need to put before and the water? No, wait, wait. What's the original question? Um, it's not a question. I what mean, I'm saying is that there's example. an observation yes, yes. that on, along the process of quantitative change, yes. if you change the quantity of something, yes. eventually yes. Uh, there's, a, there's a point yes. where quantitative change will happen. A so quality, it's not quality, change. Quality uh, change. He's drunk. Yeah, he's, he's drunk. drunk. Yeah. He's drunk. I get you. I get you. He's I'm drunk. Probably, he's drunk. Like, I'm like, I'm trying to follow you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Let him go. Let him go. I'm trying to follow you. And I'm like, no, yeah. I'm missing you every time. Yeah. They're tongue twisters, okay. Okay, man. Okay, cool. But it makes sense the other way as well. Like, So so if I've got if I've got a hot rock and I pour water over it, it's like about how much water until it becomes cold? No, no, no. no. Get get what I'm saying. We're talking about a change... Same with the kettle. It's cold. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're talking about the difference between a quality, a quantitative change, procedure, quantitative procedure, and a qualitative procedure. Okay. Right. An example is you add heat to water. That heat. Oh, that's a quantitative process. Okay. How much heat you're adding? It's going up in degrees. That's how much water heat the water can contain. Okay. So we're now engaging in what we call a quantitative process. Okay. It's incremental. This process is quantitative. We okay. keep adding heat to the water. Yes. Before it reaches a certain point. But when the water gets to it, that, that very process, that very quantitative process yes. will lead to a qualitative change. The water will change from water to steam. Liquid. The thing itself now changes. It's no longer just it's adding gas. heat. Now there's a qualitative change. Steam. The conditions are now different. It's, it's no steam. longer water. It's steam. Yeah. Yes, the water boils, evaporates, turns into vapor or steam. Okay. Mm -hmm. So by oh, virtue okay. of us engaging in a quantitative process, that led to a qualitative change. Okay. Okay. No, I think I, I think I stepped ahead of you because now I'm just relating it back to us tilling the land and what do you call our yes. economic process. Economic, but yes. well, can I get economic economic development? Yes. Yes. So <laughs> when it comes to the economy, uh -huh. the quantitative process and economic change, we're talking about a change in economic philosophy or economic systems. So we might move from a communism or what was called communalism to or communism is it to right? feudalism or mercantilism. Or mercantilism, right? We're talking about economic philosophies. And I'm trying to describe why do we change? Why were we once communist? Now we're capitalist. Now we're moving towards what, what happens in these economies that we change our philosophies? What, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what informs our process of economic change, i.e. economic development? You might just sit, you you see, this might be difficult because you might have never had the thoughts as just an everyday person when, about the economy. You're like, how's the economy? Oh, what do you think about capitalism? Uh, you just have general ideas based on what you've heard the news say, other people say. Well, capitalism exploits well, the workers and that's why I think capitalism is bad. That's your knowledge. It's finished. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> it ends there. But this book is brilliant because it now it gets, it takes you there. Like, mm, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. This is the logic. Mm. Nobody just saw it, sat and thought, uh, I'm going to think of an economic system to fuck up all the working class people. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I'm going to describe it in detail. <laughs> I have the whole plan. Mm -hmm. So you think about these evil capitalists like they sit in boardrooms. How are we going to exploit the masses? The Illuminati. Yeah. The exactly. Illuminati. Mm. But what Walter does is he shows you how these economic systems evolve. And they evolve from the very natural process of us mastering our development environment oh environment sorry yes so our economy was months once once made up of just us hunting and gathering food so the majority of our economy our resources were weapons and the food the tools that we use the tools and the food that was the economy it's no iphones no right yeah tools no and food laptops. uh and we were hunter-gatherer societies, right? Usually, I think it was Karl Marx who made this observation. Gladly. Karl Marx makes the observation of how European history develops, right? 
because he was a European, right? Karl, Karl Marx was a German. So he's making an observation on how development happens in Europe. He says they started first with uh, a concept and an economic philosophy, an economic system called communism. I've never even heard that one. Communism. Yeah, it sounds like communism. Yeah, it sounds to be like honest, communism. Right? I'm still learning what's the difference. Mm -hmm. Communism. That's the beginning. So this is described by a, a, a band of hunters and gatherers. We're just hunters and gatherers, but in groups. So like my group of hunters and gatherers, we, as we are hunting and gathering, we're like, oh, there's another group of hunters and gatherers. So these bands then come together to form an economy. That's, that's communism, right? And in this economic system, property is collectively owned. So that mic is not yours. There's no private property. It's, it's for the group. But they didn't have microphones back then. So it's just like those are the spears. It's not Masako spear or, or that cow is not, that's, no, that's Ngonko's cow. Our cow, yeah. <laughs> That's the community's mm -hmm. cow. That's yeah. what we're going to eat. Yeah. This is the community's, we all play on that soccer field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. We, mm -hmm. It wasn't soccer back then, of course, but mm -hmm. whatever recreational activities we were taking part in, mm -hmm. that's a communal area. Mm -hmm. We all play there. Everyone's allowed to play there. Yeah. As long as you're part of this community, there's no one saying, hey, you can't step, that's private land. You can't play on that pitch or we're all using that resource mm. for all of us. Mm. That's what describes this economy. And work is done in common. We all kind of are working for yeah, hunting or working mm. for all hunting. Mm. Whether that be hunting. The women are all building. doing one thing. Yeah, the men are all cooking, doing one thing. Yeah. This, if we're, doing this, we're working together we're doing this. and we're sharing our resources. Right. Yeah. And so the society is the the resources of that society is more egalitarian. Mm -hmm. And this is the argument that what today would, I'm foreshadowing here, but what today socialists, what you'd call socialists, they, they have that argument that no, we can share. You, you know, capitalists argue that it's human nature to be the way that we are, selfish and self-preserving. Yeah. But then the socialists will be like, just look at the egalitarian societies we once had. We once shared all the property. We once yeah. did this. Mm. And the many questions that come with and that. And everybody well. was sustained. Mm. No one lacked. Mm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a whole chat. It's a big conversation. It's, a, it's such a huge one because you're dealing with heavy topics of economic systems. They all be. That mm. are continuously changing. Uh -huh. A lot of factors that uh -huh. influence that. So goods are, shared e goods are shared out equally. Like we all get spears. We all have time to all have all that's communalism, that right? Mm -hmm. So then he keeps observing hum European society. We start with communalism. That evolves into slavery. That's the next step. It's slavery. <laughs> what a jump. <laughs> yeah, what a jump. Yeah. Let's take another super mind <laughs> last real quick. <laughs> communalism. Communalism. Turns to slavery. Turns to slavery. Yeah. This was Karl Marx. Excuse me. It turns to slavery. Why? Well, he says, an ex an extension of dom domineering elements within the family. Okay, so certain families, be certain elements allow them to dominate other families, whether it's their genetics, maybe this breeding selection, this breeding group, all, the, all of them are tall. Mm -hmm. So they're better hunters than, than others, than those ones. So yeah. they're starting to collect more and more mm. animals, herd more. Yeah. And maybe they start to dominate maybe the other families, Please, right? Yeah. <laughs> So because this family is good at hunting, they're like, because we do all the hunting, when the food comes, we divide it up first and then share it with everyone. Mm. Now that's our responsibility to divide up the food. Mm. They start to dominate the other people. Mm. So maybe they, okay, because we, are, we have the most valuable skill. We dominate, we get the, f man, this group of men or that family yeah. is the best at hunting. Maybe they come through and say, you guys, uh, well, then clean the animal for us to consume. You guys skin it and everything and, and then make the clothes. But they don't give you a choice. They force that certain sector. On you. Yeah, that and certain responsibility, that labor. Slavery. That's how slavery begins to happen. It's mm -hmm. like... It's a you physical better. dominance. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a dominance. Mm -hmm. So it starts to be like, you better, you better make the clothes. What are you doing? <laughs> Because I'm hunting. And it can start with simple dynamics like females and males. Like, mm. you, you better mm. do this. This is your job. Mm. Mm. And if you don't, we beat you. It's like, it's like, 
there's no laws yet that mm. there's no social consciousness mm. where it's yeah, ro- yeah, yeah. it's domination it's pure it's animalistic mm. Yeah, and this is happening within its own society. That's happening within its, its own society. society. It still happens before, today. Before it branches out, because I'm sure you can find societies that are I like the way you said it's animalistic, than. because it, it is. still yeah. happens today. Yeah, it still well, happens. It still happens We today. can still observe this. As much as communalism, right, I said it right, well, doesn't still slavery. happen today. We're not slavery. Well, I mean, like, communalism is where we passed, doesn't happen today. Now we're on slavery. Slavery, we know, still happens today. It still exists. Today. But I mean, just that, yeah. like, the, the, the dominance, animalistic dominant, as being as i'm thinking about it it can't only be physical dominance it can't be the only driving factor but i can imagine it in a smaller society yeah where it has to be bigger you know probably male species yeah nowadays it's it's it gets 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 deeper it gets way deeper it gets complex as we grow we're just showing the evolution of how these things came to exist dominance is dominance not doesn't have to be physical physical no yeah dominance is dominance because even if even if now I'm the family who's the best hunters mm-hmm. and then and then we now enslave you, it doesn't mean that I'm stronger than you. Mm-mm. It just means that without me, some of you are not eating. There we go. So uh, that's just a fact. <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys are going to have to curl some curd curb the herd, herd a bit you know yeah. call the herd sorry call the herd a bit and 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 uh-huh. get rid of a few members of your loved society because uh we're out then yeah that's still dominance it's you know because we, we went from communism physical. to we're the best so we're out and you guys go no without you guys our food yeah then yeah. it's like okay then slave then you gotta do what <laughs> i gotta then do then you slave you know and it's not a physical dominance it's, it's not, a it if i leave be. you're done you're not eating you're done, you're done. Which is again still happening today and you're not protected. because there some women stay in relationships where they're being physically dominated so you, because they feel uh-huh. like so if they leave, the, they die. They die. They die. So, Katli, you could. This is important. Can we? Is it a good time to check the cameras before we get? I think deeper we into are it? really still good. Yeah, I'll check. What is it? Okay. Last time we'll minutes. check. Yeah. Oh, it's just ten minutes. Wow. One hour, ten minutes. Carbonate. Oh, one hour, ten, <laughs> ten minutes. Yeah. That's still going Same. one hour. One this. Hour, ten minutes. I didn't check that one. My bad. <laughs> One hour, ten minutes. Hour, this ten is minutes. gonna be a three-hour chat, guys. One hour, ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, let's go. Let's go. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> we did say that once you get to that point, where people have already tapped out. <laughs> now, now the conversation is happening. Yeah. Oh, now that everybody's God. already gone, racist, racist, racist. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 let's get into it. Yeah. So this is interesting, Katli. Yeah. What you'll notice is that the things that look complex today in our society, like certain people feeling like a certain group has more resources than another group yeah right or feeling like you you're being dominated in certain ways like slavery still exists people saying there's a new apartheid or there's there's just new forms of slavery yeah you working at a corporate job and feeling like but i'm kind of a slave i don't have certain choices Mm -hmm. yeah that has a genesis that's the Mm -hmm. point that has a genesis and And once you understand the principle at its fundamental level you can the complexity starts to mean nothing you can see through it and you can see it clearly now it's not just you complaining you know what caused the problem Mm. and you know which elements are relegated to human nature versus genuinely that the other group is just terrible Mm. yeah you can get back to grassroots and then pick out we're gonna we're coming (laughs) <laughs> we're going somewhere here mm. so slavery right <laughs> an extension of domineering elements within the family mm. right some groups being overwhelmed by others These are some of the things that dis- slavery right mm. um and and during this stage of development the slave's main job was to produce food mm-hmm. so food was a big part of resources yeah, a, a big part of our economy for oh, a long time economy, okay, yeah. as we were developing yeah mm-hmm. Human beings' main fight on this planet was food. to get food. Mm. E- economically, we didn't need anything else. We just needed food. Sustenance. We were in, tr- exactly. Today we have things, the people that have not developed that uh, are still mm-hmm. sustenance farmers. We call them sustenance farmers. But mm. to that produce like food on their own land, mm-hmm. on a small patch. Subsistence We call farmers. those people. Ah! Subsistence farmers. We call just them for your own subsistence food. farmers. We still use that word. Yeah. Those people are at a different stage of development than you sitting here in, in this system today. They're you not go to your pick and pay. They're far back in development. They have not created their well, we'll talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. So slavery. The slave's main job is to produce for food. That was a big part of our economy. Things started to change only really when we were 
starting to have a command better of our environment and started to produce more food. So every economic stage is informed by our ability to produce more. At every stage, the more we produce, that's when economic paradigms start to shift. How we produce, uh, uh, how much we produce affects how we produce. Right? It eventually affects how we produce. And how we produce is the economy. Mm. That's the economy. It's about the factors of production. You hear this all the time. Who Absolutely. is in control of the factors of production? What are the factors of production in a society? This is what economies, economists are talking about. What is the most valuable factor of production? Slaves. Because they produce the food. I mean, you could argue for that. <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing. That I, mean, I, think I said it off. off I mean, that's okay, a good yeah. answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. slaves. I think Emmanuel's. I stole Emmanuel's answer. What, was your answer slaves? Yeah. yeah, off camera. Yeah. Oh, oh, off camera. Yeah. First, you said the food, and I said no, that's the product. I said the food, and then you said that's the product. Yeah. And so, I said, what okay. f what factor of production is the most valuable? Slave. Oh, agriculture. The human. It's not even slaves. I don't think it's slaves. Agriculture or whatever. whatever. I, th I think yeah, it is yeah. intrinsically slaves, but because of certain systems that came of exploitation, um, it's not the slaves. What's the most valuable factor of production? Let me ask this. What are factors of production? Maybe yeah, that will help chat. you answer. That, we need a list of the <laughs> factors of production. They're not that many. Okay. Yeah, well, in, in, the, in the classical model, they're not that many. Should I answer? Is it... Yes. Is this guy, you guys tapping out? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so factors of production, land, labor, capital. You've never heard that before? You've never heard that before? Land, labor, capital. These are factors it's of This is economics this, 101, yeah. economics and management science, grade 10. Uh, no? Grade 10. Okay, now is where I don't play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah just go into it. Simple, yeah, simple. I'm like waiting for this guy to <sighs> stop guy. looking at us like, you guys are so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't listen or read anything? Really? Really? Do I have really? to read the whole book for you? Like, stop, stop, like, <laughs> do, I the whole do I have to, yeah, do I have to keep teaching you guys <laughs> this whole conversation? <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for him to stop saying that and teach us so we can participate. Like, for real. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> In the best. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, okay, no. Mm. Land, labor, capital. Yeah. Um, right? Um, those are the factors, the traditional uh, factors of production. And the most valuable factor of production, if food is the most valuable product, land is the most valuable factor of production. Mm -hmm. The land. And that indeed, um, that's, that indeed was true because as we move on to the next stage of development, the next economic system that evolves from slavery is feudalism. Mm -hmm. This was, you know, this is the era. I thought feudalism is typically characterized by the era of kings and queens. Yeah. Um, but let's describe what then happens as observed by Karl Marx during feudalism, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have slaves. They are working the land. Um, they're producing food mostly. Um, I think the key characteristics about slavery to understand is that the slave is the is a person's property. So I own the slave. Mm -hmm. It's my slave. Mm. If I move somewhere, I'm taking my slaves. Mm. Right? But when we move to feudalism, the slave is no longer the property of a person. Right? Yeah. The slave is kind of tied to the land now. A factor of production. Yes. So in, in feudalism, if now Katlego owns this farm, so the, the ownership changes. I owned it first, but now Katlego comes to run this farm. The slaves stay on the land. They don't go with me. Mm -hmm. And they now work for Katlego. Mm -hmm. sure. They now work for the new lord of the land. Mm -hmm. The landlord. Mm -hmm. The new landlord, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about feudalism. Uh, agriculture remains the primary means of making a livelihood. So food is still the biggest part of this economy. Yeah. So you can see now in our development, food was the thing. That's why even w white people in South Africa, the farmers were the ones. They have the land, right? Mm. Um, before, before industrialism, before capitalism, before we move on, which is the next stage of production, mm. capitalism, owning land was the thing. Mm. You're wealthy right. if you own You were the wealthy person. It's, I mean, that's a, everybody needs that resources. Yeah. Everybody needs that resource. And you don't have to work the land. You have people that work the land and you exploit the profit. Mm -hmm. um, 
which we'll talk about what that means in Karl Marx's perspective. So agriculture remains the primary means of making a livelihood. But the land necessary for that purpose were in the hands of a few. So what happens, um, so we already d- determined that slave, during slavery, certain people begin to dominate, right? The domineering elements of certain people start to take over. Mm-hmm. So we move from this egalitarian society where property is common, is for, is for everyone. Property is collectively owned. And b- these dominating people start accruing the factors of production um, to themselves because they're valuable and they dominate, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so in feudalism, we're still producing, but the land is in few, even fewer hands. And I think it's because of certain innovations. Like as we begin to produce more, fewer people are needed to produce. Mm. So we, we start getting freed. In an egalitarian society, everybody had to get food. We all needed to participate in this food gathering process mm. for us to survive. The story of humanity is really a story of survival. And we, we all needed to participate. But the more food we can produce, right, when we, uh, it, when we stop being nomadic in certain things start to come into place Mm. we start to be able to settle on one land and we can grow the food we can export seeds import seeds depending on how society is developing right we're skipping a lot of the details because it's just a big historical conversation otherwise Mm. but a certain invention start to come into play like a technology could just be the way we farm right how we how we nourish our plants and everything once we start producing this access as our quantity increases the quality of what's going on changes, mm. right? Mm. Um, it back to the, yes, to and the boiling water. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, and, and you must know that. You must yeah. know that economic ch- a change in economic systems is informed by our ability to produce more. That's the number one ingredient. Mm. The more we produce, that's what leads to the qualitative change. That's what moves us from this type system to this type system. Mm. This form of ownership to this form of ownership. Mm. It's all to do with quantity, how much we're producing. Mm. So as a society begins to produce a lot more, fewer people are needed to produce. Now it's like, I don't have to spend the whole day on the fields getting wheat. I can focus on other dimensions of my personality because Yaku can produce all the food, <laughs> right? Yeah. We'd spend most of our days collecting food. Um, if it weren't for some of the technology that we have today. Mm-hmm. In, a, in a certain way, the pick and pays, the shop rides, and what, they're freeing us in a certain way. From collecting food. Yeah, from Our being, sustenance. exactly. We can yeah. do other things. We can podcast. Yeah. Instead of worrying about what we're going to eat, because I know when I get to the pick and pay, somebody else would have worried about whether there's enough food mm-hmm. for this society to survive. Mm-hmm. Now, but of course, there are problems that arise. Um, the problem is not that uh, Yaku produces all the food. That technological innovation is good. The problem is the distribution of that food is determined, especially in capitalism, by what we call a market. Yeah. Free market, as free capitalism markets. would say. Yeah. It's just cap- free markets are markets that are not in trade without, without government intervention. Yeah. Right. So that's the problem with capitalism is distribution is it's a great so we have to give it its credit. You see, when you're immature in the journey of learning about economic systems, capitalism is evil. And that's why the, the debate never moves forward. It's somebody stands on this side and says capitalism is the reason why Africa is so poor today and these countries are exploited. Somebody stands on the other side. Man, capitalism is the reason why we have all this innovation and mm-hmm. scientific uh, knowledge and blah, blah, blah. And it, it's good for human motivation. Capitalism, whatever, has built so much wealth mm-hmm. for people. And yes, through capitalism, we've been able to produce an abundance like no other. But Marx and and what then become the socialist critique of s- capitalism is, is that the distribution of those produced goods of is not resources. done effectively by just the market. So the government has to intervene or and by the government we don't mean a a sect of bureaucrats that control society we mean we need laws we need structures we need something else to to determine how to distribute these resources other than the market Mm -hmm. right Um, the market is inefficient in in multiple ways Mm -hmm. so then the capitalists will say but the market is the fairest way to determine 
how to distribute resources. Mm -hmm. It's the most fair way, as they would argue. Um, but the market is, is it falls short. For example, in capitalism or in modern economics, what we call economic demand, which is how the market determines what more to produce, right? Is by studying demand. But the definition of demand is what do people want who can afford to buy it? Mm -hmm. That's the definition of de demand. The, meaning that if we look at homeless people, when it comes to economic calculations, right? Remember, they are actual scientists sitting somewhere determining what's the best uh, course to take with certain decisions, right? What to invest in next, what next industries are going to boom. There's all these financial analysts. Mm -hmm. And when they are calculating demand, they don't, for example, when we talk about the demanding of housing, the demand for houses, they don't factor homeless people in that equation of demands. Why? Because they can't afford to buy a house. So they don't think of them as demanding a house. They'll say the demand for houses is low right now, even if the city is filled with homeless people. Why? Because there's not enough willing buyers of houses. And that's in the ways that socialists are saying the market is inefficient. Current system. Yes, it, it just focuses on economic activity related to trade using our current financial yeah. system. Yeah. So because the homeless person cannot afford, afford um, he does not get included in economic predictions and economic get, yeah. analysis. Yeah. So the socialist will look at everyone deserves a house will stop. Yes. Right? The capitalist looks at money, capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. The socialist looks at society. Yeah. And what does Rodney say? He is pushing towards more of a socialist social uh, society for the African continent. And we'll talk about why. Okay. We'll get there. And, and yeah, I think that's one of the questions that I also had uh -huh. when I was reading the book where I hear you, Rodney. Yeah. I really do. But I'm just thinking, is that still the most efficient way for Africa to go? To develop. To develop it. It's a good question. It's a good Capitalism question. Capitalism is not we'll perfect talk. system. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it, it, we'll talk. We'll yeah. talk. We'll get, we'll <laughs> get there. To, we'll get there. We're getting. We're moving. Mm -hmm. We still have to talk about capitalism. So we're, we're at feudalism, right? Agriculture remains the primary means of making a, a livelihood, right? But the land necessary for that is owned in the hands of a few, mm -hmm. right? The workers on the land are no longer the property of they are masters, but are tied to the land, right? They're not called slaves anymore. In, in Europe, in this system, they were called serfs. They were called serfs, right? Um, when the ownership of the land changes, workers stay on it and produce for the new lord of the land or, or landlord. Right? So they are now serfs. Um, and here's an interesting point. Just like the child of a slave, child of a slave was then a slave. Mm -hmm. If you are the child of a slave, you're a slave. That's your economic class now. The child of a serf remained also a serf. So think about this. This is a bit hectic. Um, if you were the child, now we are seeing society move into classes. of. We're starting to create classes of people. These are the landowners, the landlords, the rich people. Um, Karl Marx calls them the bourgeoisie. So you mm -hmm. bougie. That's where that term comes from. You're so bougie. It's the bourgeoisie. Karl Marx. And then there's the ploli... Emmanuel, say this word. <laughs> Where's the word? Politari... Where's the word? I thought it would be right here. Okay. Politariat or something like that. Can you type it? Let's see. P Politariat... Which is the working class. It just means the working class yeah. of people. Proletariat. Working class people regarded collectively. Often right. used with reference to Marxism. Can you play the sound? Is there a sound? <laughs> is there a sound? Proletariat. 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 Okay. So we're starting to see the, the classification, the society being moved into different classes of mm -hmm. people. And what's unfortunate is if you're a slave and then you give birth to somebody, they're like, oh, there's a new slave, right? And the same with then when we move to feudalism, if you're the child of a serf, which were just people who basically the labor class, call it the labor class, the proletariat, the working class, meaning if your dad worked at a mine and you were born, you are not all of a sudden 
without means of any serious intervention, you are not just going to become a mine owner. Mm -hmm. You're still going to work the mines like your dad did. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a laborer. You don't get born. If your, if your mom, Katleko, was not a land owner, she did not own farms. When you get born, what are you going to do? You're going to get back in line in the system. Get back in line and look for a job by whitey. Mm. Right? The child of a serf is a serf. The child mm. of a slave is a slave. Mm. It's not some necessarily somebody forcing you to be a slave. Um, now you have freedom. It's like nobody's not forcing you to not buy land. Mm. But most of the land in South Africa has already been acquired. And it's in the hands of a few. How mm-hmm. are you going to compete? With what resources? With what resources? Without the government what backing land? you up in a significant way, giving you lots of money to buy farmland, where are you supposed to? You have to find immensely creative ways to find the value, to create the value that's needed for you to have enough resources to then buy your way out. So it's unfair. It's, it's, it's like unfair to look at South African people or black people and think they are just supposed to somehow make it out of this mm. through development or the, if they get smarter then they'll get rich and they'll be landowners like us or if mm. they participate it's, in the free market if they, they participate can. in the free market enough it's not a free market who who was it who said the free Vusi Tamakwaya said the free market is only free for people who had a chance to participate in it in the first place mm. it's not free for you and I we, and you see it in your life the, the thing about economics is outside of the big words you start to see that this is everyday life. Mm-hmm. This is, I'm born, my mom never had land or anything, owned a business, so I'm most likely going to get a job. And I'm crazy for thinking about starting a business. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I own no factors of production. I will never compete with Nike. I don't have a factory. I will never. Mm-hmm. If, if anything, my shoe has to be made in Nike's factory. They're the only ones who own the factors of production. Yeah. And that's why you'll see the economic freedom fighters come and fight for what? Economic. The nationalization of these things, like nationalize the mines, yeah. nationalize the land, you know, give us back the land, um, nationalize the banks. Right? They're fighting for nationalization because they are like, we need to take this from private ownership and bring it back to the property of the state. Mm. Now, there's problems with that yeah. that's lit, but... The idea is that without intervention mm. from a domineering power, if we don't go back and take the land back, we're not going to buy it back. Mm. And it seems like you have all these academics, all these smart people walking around thinking that we're going to get out of this situation somehow by just participating in the market. Have you ever played Monopoly against somebody who owns like a corner? <laughs> like, like <laughs> Every you time Monopoly? you pause have my... You ever, have you ever played with somebody that owns like the whole street, this side and this side? No, too. Mm. You think if I just play better, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I'm just smart, if I just play smarter, I'm gonna win. Mm-hmm. No, you lost. Mm-hmm. You lost. Every time you go past here, you have to pay. Every time you go to pick and pay, every time you go to F&B, every time you go to Edgar's, you're, you're and you think you're money. gonna compete. That's the chair. <laughs> Right. That is the chat. So, big chat. It's uh, a big one. Big chat. It's a big chat. We we're at feudalism, right? Mm. We describe feudalism as the next step of, of economic evolution. Excuse <coughs> me. Mm. What then comes from feudalism is then now capitalism. Now we move to capitalism. So again, as the technology improves, what changes in capitalism is that it's now no longer agriculture that's the main, the biggest part of the economy. Um, I wrote here that the greatest wealth is not produced in agriculture, but in machines and factories Mm -hmm. and in mines. So mining is now a bigger part of the economy. So for capitalism, if you own the mines, man, those natural resources, the stuff that we still are blind to today. When we start businesses today, look at the business landscape of young people. It's I want to start my own clothing brand. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I want to start my own restaurant, a vegan restaurant first in South Africa. I want to start my own barber. I want to start my own shoe, Casper your vest. He, shoe. <laughs> he's getting a lot of money. He's, yeah. he's, he's growing. But it's like the impact on the chain. Who owns the mines? That's the question we are not even conditioned the to materials, ask. The materials. The raw materials. The raw materials that are coming out of that, the land. Processing that. We are not even taught to look at that way. Mm-mm. That's only with Julius and with Cyril. That's mm-hmm. that. In fact, for us, we see people who own things in any 
like mines and stuff. That's the elite of the elite. Like that's like when you're at mafia level of mm. of business. We are just thinking. At least now, you see things are changing as technology is, is improving. We can build like tech businesses, and, and and society will definitely change. It's like tech is now taking over functions that government used to do. What's that going to lead to? Mm-hmm. The more and more tech AI, we're having a whole artificial intelligence revolution. Mm-hmm. The more and more that advances, the more and more we're going to be like, we don't need government to issue our money. Mm-hmm. We can use distributed ledgers, crypto. Oh, we don't, and that's going to form a new type of society. The more and more those those quality we're able to produce more of ourselves. Like if we could produce electricity, I'm telling you, government strength. <laughs> if we could produce our own electricity, government's mm-hmm. relevance will start will start questioning. And like, why are we paying these guys for anything? Because they're inefficient, and it's like if we uh-huh. can do it, by that ourselves. will lead to a qualitative change in our uh-huh. society, mm-hmm. right? So in capitalism, the greatest wealth is, is factories and mines. Like feudalism, few people still own the factors of production. Um, uh, there's an unequal distribution of products of human labor. So everything that we produce as humans is not distributed equally, mm-hmm. right? You see it every day. Black, you see, when we look at our roads, the houses that are here that we're now living in, the buildings, the malls, the, I can guarantee you that the labor that went into that, yes, the manager of the construction site might have been a white person, but the labor was a black person. But they don't own any of the products, any and any of, using. yeah, they don't own what, the products that get produced by that labor. Yeah. If that mall is now going to produce a KFC, mm-hmm. a, an Edgar's, mm-hmm. anything that comes from that mall, or factory, if they built a factory, it's not going to be distributed back. To, they're not going to say, thank you guys for this great project you did in society, building us a mall. It's really serving us really well. Uh, now that we have an excess of things that we're producing here, take back uh, John, who mm-hmm. helped build the, the piping mall. for this mall. Mm. Take here. Yeah, it doesn't. Mm. And that's where we need to start looking at share investment schemes and, and blah, blah, blah for, for ordinary people. Mm. The people working at pick and pay should own shares and pick and pay. Mm. It only makes sense. Mm. The better <laughs> they do, the more sales and more customers are happy and more people are coming to pick and pay, yeah. the more value should be accruing to the people working there. Mm. Yeah. But it currently, it doesn't work like that. That's not the system. Currently, all those proceeds go to a few people. So these, these people are kind of still, in mm. a way, enslaved, but in a fancy way. Mm. So these systems, what you should be starting to notice is that certain people who are relegated to certain classes just remain in those classes, but the name changes. Mm. Yes, ever so often a a person will go from lower class to uh, a different class. But how many people are making that migration? It's kind of controlled. Yeah. Not right. as rapidly. We'd as need possible. the data. Yeah, we'd need yeah, the data need as to how many. The, and, and the capitalist I, f- idea, how they justify all of this is that a, a rising tide lifts all boats. So the more we all produce better iPhones, what, 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 all our lives are better for it, right? They don't have an incentive to pull back into yeah. society. Is that, that uh, what do you call it? Rising tide lifts all boats. The wealth will trickle down to everyone else. <laughs> It's not as fast. It's not as efficient, right? But isn't an element of that true? That we are it is true. wealthier as a society. No, it is true. The fact yeah. that we have Wi-Fi now, the fact that we don't have to concern ourselves with hunting and gathering, mm-hmm. that has made our lives wealthier. We don't spend most of our time going, walking 10 kilometers to fetch water down the road. Mm-hmm. Right? So a rising tide does lift all boats. It is true. But that's, I think, is an excuse to the agency, which Robert Walter Rudney speaks about. The urgency we need to look at our, and the urgency we need to look at our distribution models. And the reason why this book is then prophetic is that Walter Rudney then so, predicts that in, within and Karl Marx, capitalism has the seeds of its own destruction. That this this inefficiency in the way that it distributes resources will eventually cause an uprising. And he says, in every regime change, not regime, sorry, in every kind of social change, it's the tensions created by the system, right? The the tensions we created between the slave and the feudalist, the, or the, the, the kings and queens, the wealthy class. The tensions created between the capitalists, uh, the industrialists, mm-hmm. and the working class. 
that eventually is what's going to lead to the toppling over of the system. These systems create tensions. He, he observes this. Mm-hmm. He has a name for it even. He has a name for it. He describes it as theory. So this was a proper thinker. Mm-hmm. Walter Rooney was a proper thinker. He theorized things that we can use today. And the reason why they, they, people respect this book is they say it's almost prophetic in the way he did. He, he was speaking against capitalism when capitalism was being praised mm-hmm. for all its innovation, all its progress. Look at us. We're so fancy. We have iPhones while they are still in the huts somewhere. Developed. Right? Mm-hmm. But he predicted, Walter predicted that capitalism will become irrelevant, just like every other system before it. At some point, the system is in the way of progress. At Mm. some point, right? Mm. So now we have the technical, this is what the socialists were saying. We have the technical capabilities to produce an abundance. Technically, no one is supposed to be homeless with the technology that we have today. But capitalism is in the way. I'll give a good example. We're building African Books Institute. Right, part of our core philosophies, and I know I'm talking a lot, guys. I promise. I promise I'm done. I'm done with the rant. We're building African Books Institute. Part of our core philosophies is that quality education should be free, Mm -hmm. more accessible. If right now, with the technology we have today, Katako, with the tech we have today, if for the next year, Wits University recorded all its lectures for the business administration course. The next year it could be free for everyone to take in the country. If they developed online assessment methods, this whole year they just took the highest level cameras that we have, or good cameras. They took some editors that we have today. These are these are not specialized skills. These are skills that we have today. And they recorded that entire lecture series from start to finish and found a way to, uh, came up with a way to assess it online. The VITS, um, what do you call it? business administration degree could be free from it could just be uploaded to the internet anyone can take it but there's no way to capitalize on that no way to capitalize and that's what's affecting the distribution system. of quality education so rather people struggle to get a quality education rather education costs so much and people be excluded and not and and we see these strikes people get shot the system of capitalism is now getting in the way of progress and the more and more it does that the more progress we start having with technology the more, the more and more it does that eventually uh, people will topple over the system people will be empowered enough to topple over the capitalist system and then Walter Rudney predicts that the future of human societies of economic systems is socialism mm, so okay, after and capitalism that's what I haven't read enough yeah. to know exactly what that point is that he made so much in the book where he's like no eventually Africa needs to go to a social kind of system, that's why I said we right? talk about it yes yeah. so, right, we just went through an entire session right there was a whole a lot. I think I, I was the only one talking I right? told you I'm going to be quiet this whole episode he did say I did say in the All right. so has done most of the reading he did be, yeah to, yeah, to be most, fair yeah. 23 pages <laughs> okay. after chapter one okay. development and undevelopment well, not enough again but, yeah. yeah I'm curious I said a lot. You did. What are your thoughts? I think, like I said in the beginning, I, for now, can only attest to how the book made me feel. Because a lot has been given to me today in terms of information that I need to now go deal with. <laughs> I didn't know who John Cox is. Like What's his name? Oh, Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Karl Karl Marx. Marx. John Cox. Yeah, that Karl guy. Marx. <laughs> Okay, okay, you okay, know okay. who it was. Yeah, I know who Karl friend, Marx friend. was. I need to go do my, you know, I need to go finish the book yeah. to gain more. Because you came here prepared. Yeah. You seem to have hit like We're a, not done. We could go for another hour. For sure. I, I, I believe <laughs> I you. Swear. I believe you. But you, you, so came, you came here with sort of like a, you got a, a, a gem when you read this book. You, you yeah. got awoken when you read yeah. this book. And yeah. As much as, yes, I've felt that way when I read the book for the first two years. <laughs> Pages. <laughs> yeah. You know, these 20 pages were good. They were good, but they weren't necessarily like, oh, like Naval did to me, or, okay. or uh, uh, Sapiens did to me, or, you know, the rest yeah. of the books we Fair. read. Uh, uh, would you say that's a context mafia. thing? Like, now that I've said all of this, does it make you go, wow, I need, I need to, to go read the book? Yes, exactly. I need to go get into it 100%. Now that yeah. you've said all this, I need to go and read it with also this, this, this conversation that we had in the back of my yeah. mind. But just again, to go back to the original thing, what I said, the, how the book made me feel is like, I need to not buy from pick and pay ever again. <laughs> Shop right. Yeah. So I shit you not, bro. I sat there and I was like, 
damn, bro, why don't we have a? Oh, nice. That's a helicopter, right? Nice, nice. Oh, nice. What, what else? It's nice. fine. What else is coming? And he's coming like right here. <laughs> he's right <laughs> over. Us. A tanker truck, bro. That's a military. Yo, that's a military a, chopper. Some medical, yeah. Some, some, someone's in need of med aid. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it, it made me feel like we're responsible for our own underdevelopment. You know what I mean? For our own development. And our, our yes, own development. our own, or even our own underdevelopment. Because oh. the title was the under how you know, underdeveloped, underdeveloped Africa, Africa, right? Right. Mm. So, for our own underdevelopment, we're the cause as well. Mm. It made me feel like. Me yeah. going to shop right right now to get my groceries is the reason we're in the position we're in. And yeah. again, we we have a lot of context now. We have a lot of information as to yeah. why and more and yeah, social. And it, yeah, versus it gets deeper. It, it gets a lot it gets deeper. Political deeper. issues, government, and all this that we talked about. The monarch, churches, yeah. religion, and and mm-hmm. also remember we we spoke about domineering elements of certain right, people. Right, so, right. So white people had sophisticated metal metal at right, that time. Right. So they had weapons right. that we did not we have. Did not have right. So mm-hmm. that's another variable to the conversation. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and war as well is another variable. Hundred percent. Being able to you know withstand battle and stuff. Essentially, I just felt like there's work to do right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. should go to one of our local farmers and purely get and all our cabbage that. there. Like yeah. all of us must get our cabbage from, <laughs> from that there. person. Yeah. Like that's how I felt when I was reading it. Yeah. I was like, we need to do that. Yeah. Or to build today, capacity today. for him to yeah. produce more cabbage. More cabbage for us. Yeah. That's so or, funny. or something. Because or something. You know? What two days ago, Maso, you foreshadowed this. We went to a restaurant, uh, ah. totally locally owned restaurant Did, yeah. where they sell some lack of food, yeah. great prices. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, okay, no, this is yeah. actually I took great. my I took my girl to Lisenge. Ask her. You know, Oscar. Okay. I took her to Lisenge. You know how bougie my girl is. I took her, <laughs> I took her to Lisenge. I we took had, her. What's funny is at that restaurant, we were having the same chat. Is it? Yeah. How, international, what, how intentional it was yeah. for us to be at that restaurant. Yeah. At that yeah. 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 And it's, it, we need to start doing We need to start being intentional with stuff, my friend. You guys don't yeah. know him. Stuff. Puleng. Tintwa. Mopunyani. My neighbor. My friend. Yeah. My brother. He says black on black business must change on his status almost so, every day. Yeah. Yeah. So many Every people have tried though. Every I day. think Penuel, Penuel says the same thing. Penuel ha- had a whole campaign on on how it must. Yeah. So people who come but to this Vusi awareness, says we've pained him. <laughs> Vusi says you guys have pained him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is um, frustrated yeah, at the Vusi's state of black people with us. But, yeah, but he's pissed. But check this out. But it's fair. It's fair. You're also pissed. You get pissed. I get mad. You get mad as well. Just before we started this podcast, you were like <laughs> niggers. <laughs> But but isn't it? Did you see the? Um, did you see how much we had to do, just to understand those very simple concepts like That's why true. we should buy local? That's true. Like the government can do a, a campaign all day long. Fair. Buy local. Fair. Hey, Mzansi is like and that's all they can <laughs> that's do. That's all they do. But it's like okay, it's so much more convenient to go to the shop right. Yeah, so fair. people don't understand why. We what is the, the impact right. of me buying from this local, local vendor? Yeah. They don't know what their actions do, and they yeah. don't. Uh, they don't even know the collective yeah. uh, uh, power yeah. that they have in the grand to make scheme, a change. Yeah. And yeah. Thinking but about look how that. long it took just to get an understanding, yeah. just yeah. to get a basic of factors right. of production about why, <laughs> about why we should do. Not even that, like, because obviously for us it's like moral good. Yeah. You know, we need to help black businesses get back on their feet, and mm-hmm. we don't even have whole context. We don't have whole. We, we don't have yeah. economic we don't have, knowledge. We don't well. have economic. Yeah, see, I was sitting here silent <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. I was quiet. Yeah. I was quiet. I was well, I knew what you were talking about, yeah. but yeah. I had yeah. to, was like, to, 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 to participate yeah. because I'm just like, yes, like it. Yeah. This is a lot of information I'm yeah. just absorbing, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, on my side, eh, while starting the book, of course, I'm not too far, but I am past 23 pages. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Um, but yeah, just, I'm not. This, <laughs> I mean, as I started, I was just like, this is again another example of. Uh, us not being exposed to such authors or such people you know our history what we've been taught in school does will never show you these kind of people what they've gone through and the thinking systems that they've given to us you Mm. know i look at this and just for us to get to a fraction of what the book is even talking about right it's so dense it's probably an hour long of footage as well um but it just shows the value of the book that will come you know like what he's sharing and um i just for me, to be honest, we were reading it, right? One, I'm glad that he pointed out 
he's not coming from a victim mentality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Of us Africans, it's only Europe. We are the only problem. And he states that in the preface, which I loved. I'm like, okay, you know, there's also that chat of moving away from just being the victim and from being the victim the, conversation, yeah, being the one that's always been oppressed. Because if you stay like that, you know, you don't change. Yeah. The, uh, uh, yeah okay, heroes okay. look into the villains for help. <laughs> but the one thing that I feel like will be explained a lot further in the book, right, is that chat of Africans moving to towards a, state a socialist of, state of social can state we, can, can i mean can we conclude by talking a little bit about that do you guys okay. mind no, about africa so. moving Please. to more words of a socialist state 100. i think see the From dynamics south africa right yeah uh, socialist no state. yeah well i'm going to talk I mean, specifically a about nation. south africa okay. as a, as a whole, yeah of course yeah. i'm going to talk specifically about south africa okay. right and if you look at the situation in south africa uh, we had these industrialists right so the the boers who, who were landlords, <laughs> owners of, of the land right. for a very long time, looked up to the, remember, as, as we moved to a capitalist society, then um, the, the value is no longer just in the land. Most of the value or the biggest part of the economy now becomes machinery, right? Uh -huh. So factories and mining. So they looked up to the, um, I think, English industrialists. The Boers. Mm -hmm. So they, they band together to become industrialists themselves. They looked up to the wealth that the capitalists were creating and, and became the new capitalist class, right? So we know of all these Afrikaners started businesses, right? Mm -hmm. so they, through government intervention, mm -hmm. um, through the uh, things like the Boer bond, they started investing in African Afrikaner businesses. And then now we have our Sunlams, we have our Capitex, right? We have our, uh, these are all businesses that were, uh, there was a conscious investment from the government with this level of understanding to build up the Afrikaner nation, right? Mm -hmm. So they became the new industrialists, right? The Afrikaner people. They were able to make that transition and we should look to them as a model of how to do that if we were to do that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're in behind in development in, in, in that sense. But something unique happened in, in South Africa where, and you will start to realize why the conversation of economics is difficult is because there's all these unique cases. But once you, we've had a conversation about the fundamentals. Mm. Once you understand that, then you can have a conversation about, okay, why this is a it's little specific. bit, it's not completely yes. socialist. Yes. It's not completely yeah. capitalist. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind, kind of, of in the, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, I hear so what you're saying. So now we have a situation where South Africa, I think preemptively, like I said, remember Tanzania was the epicenter, epicenter of yeah. our liberation yeah. movements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were heavily influenced by that, yeah, right? we and that and that that shows with our mili our radical military wing forces naming them. Again, I don't know the official connection yes. between naming mm -hmm. Azania, Azania, the country yes. Azania, yes. and also our liberation movements being called Azanian Azania people from Liberation Army, mm -hmm. Tanzania. I don't know the connection between all of that. Right, right, but right, right, what right, I can right. show you as another uh, c um, connection is that we kind of jumped into the socialist state without being prepared for it, without having the capital. See, we thought we were a rainbow nation. We thought the resources uh, of oh, South, Africa, South Africa. We thought the resources of South Africa won. So what yeah. the Boers have built, that's our stuff too. Mm. <laughs> that's all this infrastructure is ours. We thought we were in this together. So, so, so check this out. Like, so check this out. I like out. the way he said that yeah, right yeah, now because it should be that way. Right. <laughs> we, we, but unfortunately, but yes, we, I, I guess what I'm saying is that we thought we're operating now primarily as a national identity. Yeah. As a nation state, the nation state of South Africa with a brand new constitution, not just flag, black European. people, white people. So we thought this is the res resources that we have as the state of South Africa. So the, this is what the black elitists did. Um, um, without being prepared, without owning industry, they started implementing socialist policies. Ah, there we go. So free education for all. Without the factors free of production. Free quality education for all. <laughs> free healthcare. Everybody gets a free house. If you can't afford a house, the government will build a house for you. That's socialist. That's Remember, we spoke about what socialism is, and mm. now we ha need to distribute. Socialism is on the distribution but level. But there's no way to not capitalize. The <laughs> but there's no way to capitalize, which okay. is yeah, why. That's not capitalism. Eh? Right, right, so, right. So, but what I'm saying is that socialism We're trying to implement social, is social on the distribution level, not the production, not the production level. Right, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. So we were like, okay, if you can't afford a house, because we are able to, government will pay the house, will distribute the funds that we all collectively collect through right, tax right. Yeah. and we'll give people who can't afford a house a house. Yeah. People who can't afford education, education. Right. Yeah. And now we complain that we've created this nanny state where black people are just dependent and can't build for themselves. Yeah. So what has happened is that we now have a come 
become accustomed to the benefits of socialism, which is a great idea. In a capitalist but game. we haven't <laughs> built no, we haven't built the industries yes, that are going to support trees. all of this. Yes. Those are white people stuff. Yes. It's mm. not South Africa we have stuff, no unfortunately. Ownership there. We have no ownership. So it it we still have to pay it, for it. It's unsunsustainable because do you think do you think, do you think part of sorry 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 I no, wanted to ask you okay. I don't want to interrupt you but do you think do you think part of what's happening right now with the state right because you know how many investors are going out of the, the, the country the country yeah. like let them burn that's exactly what I'm asking well. that's exactly what I'm asking mm-hmm. do you think yeah. that's part of the intellectuals up there plan because. Yeah, the intellectuals they, are frustrated. I don't know if you ever speak to a, a politician, but they seemingly seem too calm about everything <laughs> all the time. Like, I know some poli- poli- political well, people. Well, if they were some panicking, us, then the then, implication then, would be like, we are f- we are all this whole thing But then that's a game. Then that's a game. Then. It is. So, so then do you think this is part of the plan or do you think it's like a chess game where they're like, I'm not going to tell you my next move? No, I, th- I think because they're just not admitting clearly how much they've messed up. We have a serious yeah. problem. We're moving towards a failed state. If, if anything, we're already a failed state. Right. A failed nation state. Right. And, and if this continues, there's so many, African there's so many well. possibilities about where our situation ends up. Violent revolution where the working class rises up. Yeah, and says, fuck this. And says, you know what? Yeah. Actually, yeah, the gap sure. is too big. For sure. Right? Yeah. Um, Hence, they can freely come and rob you in Joburg and feel nothing. Hundred percent. Oh yeah. Or, or, or inflation yeah. just gets so high, and we start experiencing the levels of hyperinflation that other countries yeah. went through. Our currency yeah. becomes not valuable enough. Yeah. Uh, talent and businesses keep migrating Great out the country, out the country yeah. et cetera, et cetera. That's yeah. what's happening right now in right South now. Africa. Right. And then what happens is, as a nation state fails, they start to lose di- independence. So mm-hmm. you'll Some see that South Africa right come now, try and yeah, take South Africa is using the US dollar as its currency. Yeah. And you kind of become, we, we go back to a, colo- you're kind of a colonial <laughs> state. Yeah. We just don't use those words because yeah, it's touchy. Because it's, yeah. it's Black Lives touchy. Matter. It's touchy because Black, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hence from underdevelopment to developing. Right? Did, <laughs> that yeah. choice of words and as well okay mm, what we do have to end the podcast yeah, although we, we do, do want to have a longer conversation yeah, yeah, I'll more. end it with this Gatti, yeah, right sure. under development as a concept is what we need to talk about the next time if we ever get a chance to talk about this again mm. you know is that under development uh, when we say Europe underdeveloped Africa we're not saying that Africa is at a lesser stage of development than, than developed countries. Mm. That's not what, what we're saying. We're not saying if Africa just continues on the development trajectory, we will get to where development countries are. Mm. I think another important point that Walter points out in his work, which is the foundation for work that came after that, is that the concept of underdevelopment, underdevelopment is an active principle. It's not a, this, how do I describe it? So, we make the false assumption that the history of developed countries is the same as our history. Mm. That a developed country like Germany or, or whatever you consider a developed country right now was once where we are. Mm. And they just Didn't went know. down the, the, the future, the golden path of development. And now they got they're it there. Right. Mm. So we think that if we go down the same path, we'll become developed like them. Mm. Then he says, no, the dynamics are, are very different. He says, the nature of capitalism, imperialism and colonialism creates the underdevelopment that Africa is going through. He says there's a difference between undeveloped and underdeveloped. Mm. Underdeveloped is a whole monster of its own mm. where, you're, where you're extracting the, the surplus value that the labor is creating and using it to benefit your nation. So for, in order for us to develop the way Europe did, we'd have to subjugate another country into like slavery. That. We need to col- colonize them yeah. so, and exploit them of their resources yeah, the same way. Yeah. It's not just that if we all get smarter and yeah. produce better, we'll, yeah. we'll head down the same path. Yeah. So we must rid ourselves of the notion that Europe was once as underdeveloped as us. Europe was never underdeveloped. No Europe was one once, them. they were once undeveloped, Mm-hmm. but they were not underdeveloped. underdeveloped. They yeah. never went through that historical process the yeah. same that we went through, yeah. which makes our situation unique. Yeah. It's a master of a conversation. There's a research paper that's out. Yeah. Emmanuel read it because I made him read it before <laughs> we knew about the, the this book. book. Yeah. Now, that was, small piece, yeah. One of the premier's advisors shared with me this research paper. It's called The, De- the Development of Underdevelopment. You can look it up. Yeah. It's not a long paper, but it goes into this in detail. And yeah. with that being said, yeah, guys. It's a wrap. That was... Jesus. A point, eh? Unsubscribe. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Dislike. Delete. Block. Dislike. 
Cheers, guys. <laughs> Don't even try Unsubscribe, comment. Unsubscribe, dislike. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Till the next time. Till the next time. Cheers.